The beautiful blue sea washed over the island, gently shimmering under the bright rays of the sun, and beckoned to me. The beauty of the island did not end there, and its main pearl was a large mansion. It was located in the very center of the island, and a wealthy family lived there, but now the parents were away, and everything was run by a very young heir, their only son. Most of their days were spent in peace and quiet, and today was no exception. Lily's maid hurriedly bringing a white envelope, leaving behind her the loud clatter of shoes running down the long corridor. Tearing the red seal off the paper, the heir saw his father's signature, and the news was not at all pleasant for him. Very soon his father was to return home. However, for some reason this news did not please our hero at all. Disappointed with the bad news, he sent the maid to work, and he himself wandered to the other side of the building to his room. When he reached his room, he sighed languidly and lay down on the velvet couch, putting near his head a framed photo, which was very dear to him. The photo was of a beautiful woman, his mother, who was hugging him with all her love and smiling. It was not a long period of time together before she fell ill and died, but it was enough for him to become very attached to her and miss her constantly. Every day he spent thinking about his mother, so the weeks dragged on for years. The gray everyday life was only temporarily embellished by the mockery of one of the maids, who came to play a joke on Vanel this time. All she had to do was whisper his name in his ear to make him jump up from the couch. When she saw him dozing off, she couldn't pass by without wishing him sweet dreams, so she reached out a warm palm to his forehead, wanting to fix his hair. After that, his sleep faded away, and Vanel stammered in fright, trying to ask how she had gotten into his locked room, but it was too easy for her. She was no ordinary maid at all. She was aware that he knew her well, but somehow a fraction of fear stayed with him constantly at her presence nearby. Worried for him, Labelle advised him to rest for the rest of the day, but her advice was unnecessary, so he refused to even sleep. It was the 2000th year in Astarica City, Hagua Island. The prestigious Norton Mansion where our hero's family lived was the best in this entire city. Everyone said that the devil himself lived in the mansion that was on the island, but in fact, the Norton family lived there. At the moment, only Vanel Norton, the successor to the current head of the house, lived there. He was perfectly able to spend his time working and resting moderately. Even now he was lounging in his warm bed until something that looked suspiciously like a red tentacle began to poke at his cheek. Turning away from the annoying factor, he bumped into something soft, causing him to have to open his eyes. It just so happened that he hadn't slept with toys since he was a baby, so he was greatly surprised when he fumbled for an elastic soft object near him and realized what it could be. As it turned out, he was awakened by the maid Libelle, who tried her best to please her master. She was different from her colleagues, so she could behave quite recklessly towards Vanel without consequences for herself. Naturally, he did not expect such an awakening and suddenly screamed for the whole mansion, jumping away from her and dropping his pillow on the floor. As the red tentacles continued to reach for him, moving further away from her, he blushed and asked in a rude tone why she had climbed onto his bed. However, Libelle, as if nothing had happened, put her palm to her face and smiled sweetly, pretending not to understand what was wrong and what she had done wrong. Naturally, our hero just wanted to wake up quietly every morning without being bullied. But for her, that was the order of the day, so she replied that she just wanted him to wake up as comfortably as possible. Except looking at her, Vanel became more serious and immediately stared at the hem of her dress. It was this detail, or rather details, that stressed him the most. From beneath her black skirt, as always, red tentacles with suction cups that twisted in all directions began to show. Libelle immediately noticed it, so she quickly covered them with the hem of her dress so as not to stress him out too much. He had actually met her only a few weeks ago, but she had only become strange over time. Here's how it happened. It was a beautiful summer day, accompanied only by birdsong over the vast grounds of the manor. Then he was introduced to the new maid, who greeted Vanel politely, trying her best to show that she was well-mannered. She curtsied and told him why she had come and introduced herself. At first glance, she looked like a normal person who would fulfill her duties, but things began to deteriorate as time went on. Libelle seemed excited to be our hero's maid, so she didn't hide her beautiful smile, thanking and passing for being hired. She seemed to be a knowledgeable maid, so it was impossible to pick on what she did wrong. Libelle was a cheerful maid doing her job correctly, plus she was experienced and beautiful. That's what everyone would say about her, and Vanel had thought the same at first. But it had been a week since she'd moved into the mansion, and then life had gone downhill for all its inhabitants. Right now, the protagonist was sitting on the windowsill surrounded by stacks of books and looking deep into the room. He stretched with fatigue, kneading his numb back, telling himself it was time to take a break. But even that would not save him from a difficult life's journey, 
for what he had set out to complete lay heavy on his shoulders. Vanell got to his feet and walked over to one of the pictures by the window and looked at the portrait of himself and his parents. They were special memories that he wanted to keep forever. Just by looking at them, he was overwhelmed with feelings of sadness and joy at the same time, calmness and experience that he didn't want to miss for some reason. Except that Libelle, who came out of nowhere, frightened him when she shrieked joyfully when she saw our hero. He didn't understand why she came to him, so he was even more angry when she found a place where he could hide from her, and which he had been using lately. As it turned out, it wasn't hard for her to find out where he was hiding, because the other maids had simply told her how he was running away to the attic. She pursued him step by step, never leaving Vanell alone for a second, which made him tense and unable to relax. Huge dark and cold tentacles were seen in every dark corner of the house. Sometimes it even seemed as if they were stalking him in every room. It was as if they were restraining his movement, preventing him from breathing a breath of fresh air. It seemed that if our hero hesitated for even a second, they would drag him down to the bottom of the floor, leaving a sticky and nasty feeling on his skin. At the same moment, Labelle was worried about him and asked if he was all right, because he didn't look so good right now. Parallel to her movements, her eight tentacles were wriggling, which were mesmerizing in their flexibility, but posed a huge threat to his life. As she came close to Vanell so that he could hear her breathing, she confessed that she had never thought of the consequences, for she had never imagined that the day would come when a man would see her like this and not run away in fear. The tentacles approaching his face were straining hard, causing cold sweat to start dripping from Vanell's forehead. Seeing how nervous he was, Labelle couldn't leave him alone, so she continued the conversation by stroking his cheek. Looking him straight in the eyes, she hinted that anything he saw or heard should remain a secret between them. The poor man was in such a position that he could not think otherwise. If he kept quiet, she wouldn't do anything to him. Her true identity was hidden behind layers of beautiful and talented maid, inspiring confidence in those around her. But in reality, she was a terrifying demon that kept Vanell at bay. He had once read a book that mentioned the 18th century, a period when demons reigned on Hagua Island. Eyewitnesses said they were about the same size as the legendary Kraken monster and belonged to the same family of squid and octopus. Many sailors who approached the island became its victims, dragged by the giant tentacles to the dark ocean floor. On one such occasion, however, one sailor was lucky enough to escape alive from the monster's clutches, after which he found himself on Hagua Island, where he was met by the terrified inhabitants of the island. Everyone who managed to talk to him was interested in what he had seen then, so they did not let him pass. As expected, the sailor began to tell about the Kraken, as a monster of terrifying size, to escape from the nasty tentacles of which could not even the fastest ship. But that wasn't all he was focusing on. Contrary to popular beliefs that the Kraken was a huge squid or octopus, this creature was different. It was also intimidating in size, but at the same time had the appearance of a long-haired girl with tentacles. Of course, none of the residents believed the sailor's delusional stories and only considered him crazy. But soon they paid for their disbelief and everything ended very sadly for them. The next day they found the body of the dead sailor, whose skin was covered with tentacle marks with suction cups. His story cost him his life, and if he had kept his mouth shut, he might have lived a little longer. Remembering the story from the old book and comparing it to the moment they met, Vanell sat cozily in Libelle's arms and compared the facts. The whole story was eerily scary and very different from reality, being more like a myth, but something about it was painfully familiar. He was uncomfortable sitting with her, but equally curious about her thoughts, whether she was keeping an eye on him to make sure no one found out her secret. Since the day our hero learned of her abilities, she had become more docile and tried to never let him out of her sight. Now they were bound together by the shackles of a shared secret. But perhaps those shackles were just as comfortable for him. Being watched meant that he could also keep an eye on her. This devilish is scary, but as long as she didn't break her promise and threaten him with death, everything was relatively normal. After the hug, she began to brush his hair behind his ear, causing Vanell to flush and blush, not understanding why she was moving even closer to him, though it seemed like she was getting closer. He pulled away from her and asked her to leave him alone. They didn't need to be together like this, and she shouldn't make him feel uncomfortable. But she replied that she didn't understand what he didn't like. No matter what our protagonist thought, Labelle herself did not feel the distance between people. However, to her, these outrages seemed too cute. So when she observed such a reaction, she even squeaked with delight. Even when he was asleep, she would come to look at his face, not to mention the way he would flinch from her cold tentacles. The whole thing delighted her. After that, Vanell's face creased, 
and he didn't know what to expect from her. Still, her behavior was very tense, so the protagonist asked her to leave the room so that he could finally change his clothes. Except it didn't agree with her wishes at all, approaching him from the back, she gently touched his shoulders, offering her help. It wasn't the first time he'd received such an embarrassing offer from her, but he couldn't get used to it. Each time he had to shout her out of his room, but it didn't work this time. That's how his daily life was suddenly filled with the insolent maid LaBelle, who began to dispose of his free time as she wished. Of course, Vanel had no desire to undress in front of her, so he froze when her tentacles began to wriggle in front of his face. She suggested that he relax and leave it to her skillful hands and tentacles, as she was one of the best maids on the estate. However, after the cold sensation of the tentacles, he quickly came to his senses and pushed her away, emphasizing that he could do everything himself, and she should leave. By the time dinner was ready, our hero was tired of her banter, but he had to act judiciously and always be on his guard. He was stressed by such overprotective behavior, and the way she found him in the attic was a little annoying. Settling into his seat at the huge table, he was approached by one of the maids that presented him with several dishes. A huge amount of seafood options were on the table in a split second. The only problem was that all the dishes were made exclusively of octopus. His surprise was unprecedented, as it was not hard to guess that LaBelle had created these masterpieces. Blushing with embarrassment at having her efforts so honorably presented in front of the Norton family heir, she put a hand to her cheek, trying to cool it down. But keeping her composure, she modestly replied that she just wanted him to taste her food. The only thought swirling in his mind at that moment was to find out who those cooked tentacles belonged to. It was only because of that that he whispered a question to her, hoping that this dish wasn't made from her herself. Except she didn't want to reveal her secret, for she definitely found such banter amusing. Sitting him back down, LaBelle reminded him that Octopus was a messenger of the devil, but if he dared to try it, it would turn out to be a surprisingly tasty dish. However, contrary to her comforting words, he was confused to think of her actually eating her kin. Even with her being so rosy about it, it didn't make the food any less suspicious. The other maid saw the confusion in his face, so she decided to head to the kitchen to prepare another meal in case he didn't like these dishes. However, no one was going to give up so easily. Getting Vanel's attention, she began wriggling in all directions, trying to shove the octopus balls into him. Placing one ball on her fork, LaBelle began her assault, bringing the balls closer and closer to him while smiling sweetly, assuring him that there was no threat from the food. Seeing her intentions, he began to resist, explaining that there were dozens of people in the mansion who would be able to see it. Except that didn't bother her, so she continued her attempt, knowing he was embarrassed as hell. She liked making him uncomfortable. When the ill-fated fork was finally pulled away from him, he exhaled in relief, hoping that was the end of it. But the next minute, a woman's hand lay on his shoulder. LaBelle whispered to him that they were the only ones in the dining hall right now, so such excuses would not work on her. She annoyed him greatly with her insolence and stubbornness, but he couldn't kick her out. Life was precious to him. She was the only maid on the estate who resisted the orders of the direct heir of the Norton family. Escaping from such an onslaught of concern into the courtyard, Vanel sat down under a broad-leafed tree, carefully leaving the book at his side, in a carefully preserved policy book. Ever since morning, LaBelle had had the entire mansion on alert. He constantly felt as if she was manipulating him as soon as she saw the inside of the house. Even though it had been a full week, he still hadn't managed to figure out her character, making it extremely difficult to interact with her. As he closed his tired eyes, he realized without realizing it that even though she was a demon, she was often interested in him in a very atypical way. For some reason now, he remembered all the moments that had been associated with his mother. Naturally, only happy events it did not end, because after her death, his father almost stopped spending time with him. He was always anywhere but home. A lump stuck in the middle of his throat, which made it seem as if the protagonist was about to cry, but the sudden touch pulled him out of the nightmare. It turned out that Vanel had fallen asleep so soundly that he hadn't even felt LaBelle move his head into her lap and now greeted him with an affectionate smile after his sudden awakening. Of course, the first thing he asked was what she was doing in the garden but the answer turned out to be horribly trivial. She had merely finished her work early and had come to keep him company. To top it all off, she had brought him an apple pie that beckoned him with its smell. Now he could feel free to eat in peace, but only these banal consolations did not calm him down, so he sighed sadly and lowered his gaze to the ground. No matter how much the protagonist thought, he could not find an answer to the question of why LaBelle continued to pursue him. If it's just because she's afraid for revealing her secret and true identity, then she could just threaten him and he'd be scared to death to take that secret with him to his grave. 
But why does she do everything else? This care and embrace, why does she need it? The servants here treated him like a sore thumb, not openly, of course, so he was sure she thought the same way, hating him for his hostility. Even if Fennell could be wrong in his guesses now, he was sure of the future for sure. His thoughts were racing, so picking a moment to distract him was difficult. As soon as LaBelle called out to him, however, he came to his senses and sprang from his seat. She didn't manage to stop him right away, so all that was left was to call out to him in the back and ask him to come back. He did not know what she wanted to tell him, but thoughts of her perfidy did not leave his head. Our hero didn't want to hear anything from her, so he started to run away in a hurry. He convinced himself that she was a treacherous devil, and the reason she stayed by his side must be for her own selfish purposes and to control him. Clenching his fist to the point of pain, he concluded that there simply could be no other reason. However, no matter how fast he ran, LaBelle continued her pursuit and picked up the hem of her dress, catching up with him faster and faster. The white bonnet that held the servant's hair back so that it would not fall down as they worked, even flew off her head. In a panting voice, she asked why he was running away, but there was no answer. His lungs were burning from his frequent breathing, and his head was beginning to spin. Whatever was happening to him, however, he was clearly not going to stop. One thought he had was to run to the end. Unfortunately for him, the long tentacles began to wrap around his body, and all his attempts to run away went in vain. After apologizing, he was stopped and pulled to him. To LaBelle, this seemed like the only way to stop our protagonist. Whether he wanted it or not didn't matter. Pulling Vanel to herself, LaBelle ran her tentacles through his silky hair. In her velvet voice, she asked if he remembered the sailor who had met the demon, and what had happened to him then. Her warm hand slid over his frightened face, and then she reminded him that anyone who saw her wouldn't be able to just run away. Turning our hero around to face her, LaBelle said that she would not just let him go, because she was evil herself. And he has only two options, death or keep silent about their little secret. However, as she promised, if no one finds out about her true identity, she won't touch him. Unfortunately, this is the kind of relationship they will have for a long time, at least as long as she would remain in her position as a maid. She didn't want to lose her job so easily, so after pinching Vanel's cheeks, she asked him to keep a demon like her on hand for a while, because she was very useful. Except he couldn't refuse her anyway, so he let her stay as long as she wanted. In this case, it was up to her. The tentacles that kept wriggling kept straining the protagonist, making it almost impossible to relax. Libelle elegantly curtsied in gratitude for being allowed to stay, and then smiled affectionately, putting the cap that had fallen off back on her hair. Trying to avoid contact with her, Vanel headed back to his cozy hiding place under the tree with his book, listening to her interesting facts along the way. For some reason right now, she decided to remind him that octopuses actually taste with their suction cups, clearly hinting at something. Naturally, these words were said for a reason, because after that, our hero felt a cold and sticky sensation on her neck. She wanted to taste it, but unfortunately, such actions were perceived wrongly, so he firmly ordered her to leave him alone. However, such a small amount of time was enough for LaBelle to be able to discern that flavor. This was how diligence felt, so she decided to tell him about it. After praising him for his persistence in his studies, she decided to reward him with a blessing and healing that would easily remove the accumulated stress and fatigue. Of course he didn't want to receive such a strange gift from a strange maid that had only arrived a few weeks ago, but she wasn't interested in his opinion at all. To her he was just a screaming toy. Showing her tongue to the protagonist, LaBelle began to approach him, removing the interfering ribbons from the butterfly hanging around her neck. The new maid of the Norton family was a devil, whose true identity was hidden behind a beautiful and mysterious girl. She found common ground with everyone until they managed to uncover her. Except Vanel was the next head of the family, and unfortunately, he found out her true identity, putting his life in danger. After such a small misstep, all the servants of the mansion were taken hostage. Every day, regardless of the time of day, LaBelle fiddled with the pillows, performing acts that ordinary people were better off not knowing about. As soon as the other workers would see her tentacles that she used to change the bedding, they would instantly panic. Vanel had no choice but to leave her in the mansion but allowing her to lord it over him like this was comparable to recklessness. Something had to be thought of. Now that his father was hardly ever home, as the next head of the family he would have to stand up for his home. Even though the demon is being quiet for now, but who knows when she'll want to betray him. You cannot know for sure what is going on in the head of your interlocutor, so acting cautiously is never unnecessary. To fight the demon, you have to start gathering information, because it couldn't go on like this. He was careful with his actions, 
unlike LaBelle, who was constantly reaching out to him and more. He was often annoyed that she couldn't keep her distance, so right now he asked her why she was tailing him. Except it turned out she just had a free window in her schedule that needed something to fill, so she decided to devote that time to Vanel. He hadn't been asked about it, however, and now he sat resenting such willfulness. Every time before leaving his room, he had to look out the door in an attempt to avoid the lovey-dovey LaBelle who was always stalking him. After successfully sneaking into his study, he exhaled a sigh of relief as he quietly closed the door behind him. His father's study used to be a gathering place for people from all over the world, so the books collected in the study of their questions were kept in perfect condition. Naturally, his father had always said not to enter his office without permission, but the situation this time was urgent. The situation was urgent, so he began to collect books without looking at what language they were written in, which caused difficulties with translation. Our hero himself had to look for information about different creatures somehow related to octopuses, and he was afraid even to imagine what she could do to him if she saw him doing it. Just like that, secretly, without telling anyone about it, he had to sneak into his father's office and research information about this demon. Who knows why it had come to land, and when it would show everyone what it could do with true power. Stepping back to his desk, he turned the page of the book and tried to make sense of everything in it. He was too engrossed, so the wily Libelle snuck up behind him again, much to Vanel's consternation. With a hurt expression on her face, she couldn't believe he had entered his father's office without permission, and then smiled slyly. She even hinted at the fact that his father's office should have been locked before breaking the rules, causing the protagonist to blush even more, realizing that he had been told off for such a simple oversight. Except this time she was joking again. For the devil to get into a closed room is a trifle, because the whole procedure took a minute or two. Naturally, Vanel didn't like the way she mocked and asked her not to do it again. However, the way he kept looking around seemed cute to her, so she continued to make him tense as she came closer and closer. And since they were already talking about this room, thanks to Vanel, this was the first time she had been in his father's study. Looking around, LaBelle pointed out that there were a lot of unusual books on the shelves, which had obviously been brought from other countries. Analyzing the room, she assumed that his father was a collector, which surprised Vanel. Hearing her question, our hero's gaze slid downward and his eyebrows furrowed. He wasn't sure about his father's hobbies or why he collected books, so he couldn't say anything in response. As expected, such a silent answer yielded nothing, so she didn't press the matter further, except that while thinking about where they were, another thought struck her, which she immediately voiced. As stated earlier, entry to the study was strictly forbidden by the master of the manor, no matter what Vanel's goals were. Therefore, she wondered, what was young master Vanel so desperately searching for in this office, looking around so intensely? Looking at how tightly he was clutching the political officer of the hard book, she immediately began to wonder what it contained. Naturally, the protagonist was not eager to tell her that he was looking for information about demons to protect the mansion because he did not know how she would react to it. She was confused by the accumulated tension or simply did not notice the mistake, but the book was unfolded with the title towards LaBelle, who easily read the title of the book, Demonology. Surprisingly, she didn't punish him or yell at him and only called his name, to which he immediately responded. After that, all she did was stroke his head, calming him down, smiling affectionately, she praised his desire for knowledge, but warned him not to break the rules his father had set. The next time he wanted to enter the study, however, she asked him to consult with others or get permission to do so. His face didn't express faint joy at her advice, so instead, LaBelle suggested he sneak in here at night while everyone was sleeping, and then he could find out whatever he wanted to know while all the other servants were asleep. He was about to dismiss that idea, as well as the rest of her ideas, when suddenly he heard the clomping of heels from the corridor. It was a disaster, because if the servant saw him in the forbidden zone, everything would be over. They would definitely report him to his father. Just one moment and they would be exposed, so he began to run frantically around the study looking for a place to hide. Meanwhile, the curious maid wandering down the hallway had already pulled the doorknob towards her. Once inside, she saw a completely empty room that held a sepulchral silence. Looking around, the maid could not believe that she was mistaken, for she must have heard voices inside the study. Meanwhile, our hero and Libelle were crammed into a small cabinet. There was not enough room for the two of them. Vanel was terribly uncomfortable, and now all he wanted was for the maid to leave quickly. It was an emergency, but even in this position, Libelle was too close to him. They were literally sitting nose to nose. Just one wrong move could cause his plan to collapse, which was to stealthily take the demonology book. Unfortunately, Vanel's experiences were all too visible even in such a gloomy place, so Libelle began his antics. 
Releasing her tentacles, she walked down his back, causing goosebumps on his skin, but he continued to hold back, mindful of why he was hiding with her. It was too ticklish, so to keep from letting out a chuckle, he covered his mouth with his hand to be sure. Switching to a whisper, he asked why she was doing this, since they could be spotted at any second. But LaBelle only smiled in response, not even trying to justify herself. The fact that they could be seen didn't seem to bother her at all. She returned her hands to their previous position. Our hero did not understand her logic, but still sat in an uncomfortable position, because he did not want to be seen by the other maid. However, there was no choice, because of which he had to endure all her insolent antics, hoping that everything will end as soon as possible. She ran her tentacle across his palm and moved closer to his ear, whispering that she could taste the hopelessness on his body. Luckily at the same moment the maid went to the door, shouting loudly to the others to help her search for Vanel, who seemed to have fallen through the ground. Then there was a clap and a muffled conversation as the servants discussed a plan to find our hero. Finally crawling out of his hiding place of a small dresser, Vanel sighed in relief, finally straightening up on the floor. The time spent with the demon seemed like an eternity to him, so as soon as he rose to his feet, he felt tired from the mental pressure. LaBelle alone was boasting about her elevated mood, because it turns out she was having a lot of fun in that cramped dresser. As it is known, octopuses like to hide in narrow and confined spaces, and she was no exception. But only our hero was not fond of it and hurried to the door, fearing to be discovered by someone again. In this, she supported him. It was always good to study, but one should not forget about rest, so LaBelle offered to keep him company. With no power over her, Vanel stared at her in silence, fearing for her to do something wrong again. Finding the right words, he replied that as long as she didn't bother him, he could rest just fine. In a way, it was a terrible statement to LaBelle, but there was some truth to it. Now all he needed to do was to discreetly take the demonology book with him. Sitting on his soft bed, Vanel asked LaBelle, who had come running at his request, if it was true that he was going to be assigned a new tutor. She replied excitedly and happily that this information was true. In fact, this was discussed at the staff meeting this morning. It seemed that there was nothing he could do about this decision, and no matter how much he argued about it, no one was listening to him, so he had to accept it. In response to his dejected exhalation, LaBelle jumped for joy, because she had offered to take on the role until a professional was found, so she happily suggested that they start classes today. However, he still didn't understand why he hadn't even been consulted, so he loudly asked her this question. She had a reasonable and accurate answer. Our hero did not go to school, so it was necessary to organize homeschooling. In addition, he had been alone in the estate for a long time, so it could be somewhat useful. This idea came to her not long ago, so at a staff meeting she suggested finding a tutor. He also understood the seriousness of the problem, so he only asked what she could teach him. Embarrassed, she inadvertently reminded him that she looked smart enough to teach him something. It was just the two of them in the same room. It was so strange for her to say that about herself, but LaBelle did not stop praising herself. Of course, it was just another joke on her part, but that didn't mean she wouldn't be able to come to him at any time. In addition, she and the other maids would take turns teaching him while Vanel looked for a proper professional tutor. But despite this, he was no longer sure of her words, because every time she mocked him lovingly and laughed. No matter how much he hid his face, she noticed his excitement, and with a scary smile advised him not to worry, and to be more confident. Libel was like a madwoman, so she kept telling him how cute he was. But the protagonist wanted to return their conversation to normal and asked her to stop her antics and hide her tentacles because they were talking about a serious topic. But she, with undisguised interest, asked why she should hide her tentacles. But remembering his recent adventures, Vanel didn't really want her to know what he tasted like because it looked and sounded strange. Smiling at his words, she tapped lightly on the bow tie he was wearing and told him how happy she was to have such a polite boy around. Well, he didn't agree with that and didn't want to admit such embarrassing words. In the meantime, they decided to change the location and go up to the attic, which was used as his hiding place. Only Libel, sitting on a soft couch, was excited because she would be teaching the future owner of the house, Norton, for some time. In the end, he did try again to refuse to be taught, but failed, so now he was sitting in front of a small table. At first, she was confused and did not know where to start the first lesson, entrusting the choice to our hero, thus asking him what he liked and what he would like to learn. However, the choice was so great that he had no idea where to start, because there was so much he didn't know. Looking at her maid's appearance, which concealed the image of a demon and an octopus, he decided to ask her about it, and wanted her to tell him everything about who she really was. Of course, this interest made her very happy, and she did not hide her happiness. 
However, he just couldn't ask her directly what the demon's weakness was, so he had to make up cautious questions on the fly. When asked what octopuses don't like, she didn't know the general answer, so she told him that she didn't get along with Murins very well herself. Well, this was quite strange. Of course, this kind of eels are quite dangerous creatures, but they did not pose any danger to a monster like Labelle. Instead of wasting time, she suggested that they look into the biology textbook and study it in more detail. As expected, they were rather angry sea creatures that could bite quite unexpectedly, which is why Labelle disliked them a bit. Lifting the book closer to his face, Vanel confirmed his guess. As he had thought, even demons had their weaknesses. He had even once wondered why she, as an octopus, was so evil, so now he came to the conclusion that she was more demon than octopus. However, when he turned the page, he noticed a cute little creature with tentacles that looked nothing like his strange maid Labelle. The moment it noticed that the protagonist was looking at the picture, it immediately turned into a copy of the relatively small creature drawn in the textbook. Vanel was so surprised to see her transformation that he didn't even notice that he was looking at her with his mouth open. It was quite an unexpected transformation, and for a while he didn't realize what he was seeing in front of him. In fact, she had done it to help him understand the essence of the octopus more easily by transforming into one to let him see it with his own eyes. However, looking at his transformed maid, it was very strange for him to know that it was actually Labelle. But looks can be deceiving. Still, even in a small body, she was able to show that there was no need to underestimate her. She is a demon, so it is easy for her to do something bad to a person. Of course he always remembered this, but now she is not only a monster, but also his maid and tutor. Only if she continued to show her best, she might one day find herself in a truly terrible situation, which is why she disliked changing her form. However, looking at her appearance, Vanel saw how cute it looked, and hoped to the last that she would not return to her previous form without knowing about certain conditions. She couldn't help but explain that she couldn't keep transforming, as each transformation consumed a lot of physical strength and energy. It was quite a pleasant piece of information, and now he could not worry and could study his subjects in peace. Even if she remained like this for years, as long as Labelle was teaching him, there shouldn't be any problems. So Vanel suggested that they continue their studies and not pay attention to her form. They agreed to start with a basic subject, so first of all she wanted to talk about the language used by the Astarits. The information was presented quite interestingly and in a rapid flow, which was perceived quite easily. But the protagonist's head was full of something else, because he still couldn't believe that a bloodthirsty demon could tell him about a school lesson so calmly. That's why for him, the situation was getting stranger every time. Suddenly he interrupted Labelle because he was a little concerned about her being a monster who understood human science. Well, it was a fairly reasonable observation that had some truth to it. At first, Vanel assumed it had something to do with magic, but she went into more detail. Libelle explained that the devil was never a magician. He is a monster who tempts people to do evil things, which means that basically, he has power only for this purpose. Therefore, it was quite easy to understand that such creatures could not use magic, and neither could Libelle. But she was not sad about it, because she was able to cope with something more difficult than magic, which not only monsters but also people themselves did not understand, such as physics. These were quite powerful words that no one expected to hear, because the usual lesson was not related to the topic of demons. But her answer proved that she had been diligently studying human knowledge and habits, even though it was quite unexpected. This only happened when beings like Libelle had lived on Earth for a long time. Without knowing it, they were becoming more and more immersed in human science, thus learning it. Recalling how long ago she herself had sat over a mountain of books and transcribed the information into a summary, Labelle told us how much effort she had to put into memorizing everything. So now she hoped that our hero would also make every effort to study, considering it a worthy hobby. But he had never been much of a bookworm, so this whole topic of studying didn't arouse too much enthusiasm in him. Besides, Vanel didn't get along with the servants, not to mention the fact that he didn't go to school at all. Even with his father, with whom he shared the same blood, he could not find common ground to talk about. Unlike other children who received awards and medals, the protagonist did not want to or could not do simple childhood things that were common to everyone else. Unfortunately, she was not a little octopus for long, not for years as Vanel expected, but only for a few minutes. And soon, Libelle, who understood his feelings and knew that he was working hard to become better, suddenly came up to the protagonist and hugged him from behind. She was the only not-quite-human in the estate who believed in him and his abilities. 
That's why she didn't want to see his sad face and always tried to cheer him up and calm him down a little bit. However, LaBelle couldn't live without humor, so she offered to listen to a joke she had recently invented. Of course, Vanel didn't want to hear the pun that always had two meanings, so he refused. It wasn't that he was upset or depressed, but his morale was so bad that it made you worry about him. However, he asked me not to worry about his mood. Well, that was a real decision, a real man's decision, so LaBelle looked at him now as an adult. But to really test it, she needed to use her tentacles and touch his skin. Only after these words, our hero got agitated and shouted that they just needed to continue studying and she should stop teasing him. Picking up the book that he had left on the table earlier, he began to pretend to pay attention to the information being presented, but in fact, he could not concentrate at all. He really couldn't understand why she was trying to learn so much about people's lives. Although she continued to threaten him, for some reason he could feel her kindness and care. Earlier, LaBelle had mentioned that she had lived a very long time, but how big was the age difference between them? Unfortunately, he was not destined to find out, so he had to try to study the information that was so carefully told to him. Sometimes it was hard for him to sleep at night because he was constantly thinking about something, so that night he took an interesting book and sat on the wide windowsill, which was carefully covered with a warm blanket and several pillows. For this purpose, he would secretly sneak out of his room to sneak into his favorite attic where he could see the stars. When he read something at such moments or looked at the stars, everything in Vanel's head became tangled with millions of colorful threads that did not lead to any correct answer. Strangely enough, this time he was not allowed to rest and understand himself, because LaBelle, knowing his secret place, came to him with a cup of hot chocolate. At this time it was difficult to meet any of the servants, because this period of the night was set aside for their rest, but she was not an ordinary maid. Besides, she was responsible for patrolling the estate that night, so she took this opportunity to sneak into his room, which, to her great regret, was empty. Not finding him in the room, she went looking for him. And very soon she found him. Her tentacles had a life of their own, and without listening to Vanel, she hugged him and pinched his cheek, asking him to give her a chance to touch his skin at least a little. She explained that she just wanted to make sure he was sleeping well. However, the protagonist could not allow her to do this, so he began to pull away from her embrace. Eventually, he managed to slip out of her grip and return to his seat by the window. Meanwhile, LaBelle couldn't help but wonder why he ran away from his room, so she asked him what was wrong. However, when she noticed the book about constellations in his hands, she already had several options for what could have happened. Realizing that this was his chance to save himself from another hug and get her interested in something else, Vanel said that he just couldn't sleep, so he went to look at the stars. He emphasized, however, that the rest of the estate didn't need to know about it. Fortunately, they both agreed, so they looked up at the starry sky together. After that, there was a silence between them, which LaBelle decided to break with stories. She said that she had once stood and watched the stars in the same way. However, even she didn't know which star was called what and where the constellation was. At that time, the stars were just like a calming agent for her, shining beautifully. At that time, nothing else was interesting around LaBelle at night except the stars, so it was the only consolation for her at that sad moment. Vanel tucked his legs under him and listened attentively to her heartfelt story. Unexpectedly, even his heart ached with sadness as he imagined it all. It was a strange and all too familiar feeling of loneliness that he himself had felt until LaBelle arrived at the house. She pointed cheerfully to the sky and asked him the name of a constellation whose stars were lined up in a way that resembled a scoop. Turning his gaze from her to the sky, Vanel replied that it was the Big Dipper, which was the simplest and most recognizable of all the constellations. The Little Dipper was always close to the Big Dipper, which followed it across the sky. Then there was the North Star, which was in the tail of the Big Dipper. More recently, scientists have agreed that the bear was recognized as a giant, so it was easy to recognize the constellations from the zodiacal circle, Leo and Virgo, near it. The combination of these three stars formed the Big Spring Triangle, which lasted from March to April. There was a lot of information at once, so it seemed impossible to memorize everything. Looking at LaBelle, it was clear that her head had been unable to comprehend anything for a long time, so she simply praised him for his knowledge. However, at the same moment, she wondered if there were any octopus constellations. Well, even though they were intelligent and lively creatures, for some reason astrologers didn't use them when naming stars and constellations. Even Vanel himself had never heard of them, so he thought that octopuses were not included in the names of constellations. Well, this was quite offensive to LaBelle, because many earthly animals were mentioned not only in the names of simple stars, but also in the zodiacs, so she was unpleasantly surprised. 
However, it was not impossible to create her own constellation and name it after an octopus. And to reassure his maid, our hero told her that they could create their own constellation and name it whatever she wanted. It is believed that the origin of the names of constellations is related to the association of stars with people, animals, and tools. At the time, this was not something incredible, but astronomers managed to come up with interesting things that were quickly applied in practical terms. For example, for navigation at sea and on land. Listening to such interesting things, Lebel became more and more impatient to connect the stars himself and finally make the constellation of the octopus. Or instead of an octopus, they could call the constellation they created Libel and Vanel. Oh yes, she liked this option much better. Our hero tried to prove to her that she couldn't do whatever she wanted just because there was no octopus constellation, but no one listened to him. And Libel just laughed at him and distorted his childish anger, not taking him seriously at all. But despite his harsh, no, she still thought Vanel was a pretty smart guy who knew a lot about the stars. She also loved stargazing, so she wanted to spend as much time with him as possible to learn more about astronomy. Of course, listening to such frank words, he blushed, not expecting such an influx of compliments, but quickly pulled himself together. Nevertheless, thinking about the whole situation, he asked her one question that had just popped into his head. This time he was really curious about what she was interested in, because up until that point, she was the only one who had asked him everything about him, and he hadn't asked her anything. In addition, a little earlier she had said that she was looking at the stars, so he assumed that she either liked them very much or, on the contrary, was already bored with them. Smiling softly back at him, Libelle replied that her story was not that interesting, but it was no secret that she had not looked at the stars for a long time. In the end, she didn't want to tell stories about herself, but she was more and more eager to hear Vanel's stories about the stars. Only now our hero realized how insidious she was, Although she knew almost everything about Vanel, he, in turn, knew almost nothing about her. To some extent it was unfair, but he shouldn't have forgotten who she really was. After he said that, Libelle began to slowly release her tentacles, waving them in the air. Asking if it was really unfair? With all her tentacles around him, she got as close to him as she could, and whispered that dealing with the devil, Vanel says some pretty strange things. Being a demonic being, Libelle asked him if he really wanted to know more about her. However, he was not afraid and did not even flinch. His voice was so confident that no other politician had such a clear answer as he did. Even though he was being held by the octopus girl, he made it clear that he wanted to hear her story and learn more about her. Even though she was an octopus, he was curious to know more about the person who was with him most of the time. Grabbing her wrist, the protagonist replied that sharing your story is a normal thing in the human world. He also thought that if he learned more about her strength now, it would be easier to fight the devil in the future using her weaknesses against him. So he pushed the cold tentacles away from him and emphasized that there was no hidden meaning behind his request because he didn't think she was planning anything against him. Well, Labelle always found his behavior funny, which is why she loved to tease him. This time was no exception, so a small laugh escaped her lips with her hand over her mouth, but her eyes still showed kindness. After she suggested that Vanel had been interested in her before, he was embarrassed and tried to show with his whole appearance that he had nothing to do with it. In this case, if he had confessed to her earlier, she would have been happy to tell him a lot of interesting things about herself. However, already knowing her character and her way of thinking, he began to repeat that he did not mean anything strange. Only she knew what he was talking about without any excuses, and it was too cute to watch him calmly. Although he was right on the one hand, she didn't feel like bringing up her memories from the bottom of the sea today. That's why she suggested that he go on a trip during his next vacation, so that they could do more stargazing together and there she would definitely tell him more about herself. After being patted on the head, he was completely confused and did not know what to say in response. Therefore, the continuation of their conversation was unexpectedly postponed to the next time, leaving Vanel alone without answers for an unspecified time. All these days dragged on for a very long time, but as Libel said, they finally went on a short night trip. In addition to a small basket, she also took instruments used in astronomy for her observations, but there was one but. Our hero was dragged there without even asking if he wanted to teach someone, so he doubted for a long time whether she wanted to play a joke and mock him again. As it turned out, she was so touched by the topic of stars that she had been preparing for this day for a long time, calculating which place to bring him to. The food basket was also perfectly prepared. The stars were perfectly visible from the coast in calm weather, but tonight the sky was covered with clouds through which even the moon could not break through. But she had a plan for this case too. To avoid the changeable weather, 
LaBelle suggested going out to sea on a boat that was left at the pier at her request. Fennell still wanted to live a little, so he was not going to use a two-seater boat to go to his death, but no matter how much she shouted at him about it, it was pointless. He was simply too afraid to go out to sea with her, and if something happened to him there, his corpse would never be found. No matter what she said in response, the protagonist flatly refused to leave the beach, because it would be too dangerous to go out to sea at night on such a boat, so their conversation came to a standstill for a while. Nevertheless, she still wanted to go with him, so she asked him to just trust her. Holding out her hand, she smiled sweetly calling after him, but fortunately, Vanel was a smart boy who remembered every second that this devil was not to be trusted. As expected, he didn't believe in her acting, and then she had to admit that she had read this phrase in a book that said that people would not be able to refuse it once they heard it. But for now, they had moved on from the topic, so after a short argument, he seriously asked her if she wanted to stay on the beach. Looking at the boat, he realized that he would have to row it by hand, which would take a lot of time, but LaBelle was full of energy and asked him not to worry about her. Raising all her tentacles, she hinted that she had enough of them to get to the right place very quickly. In the end, Vanel himself did not understand when and how she managed to put him in the boat, but he will remember this journey forever. The tentacles, which were rowing so haphazardly through the water at a crazy speed, splashed a whole lot of water in the direction of the boat, which was incredibly annoying and frightening at the same time. All this time LaBelle was having fun enjoying the sea breeze, and finally she returned to her native element. At such a speed, our hero had to grab onto anything that came to hand in order not to fly into the water. So as soon as they stopped, she didn't understand why he was so tired and started asking if he was okay. However, he was not okay at all and kept holding onto the side of the boat trying to keep from throwing up. Of course, there was nothing at hand to bring him back to consciousness, so Iruka decided to pick him up off her lap and hug him tightly, promising to take care of him. Unfortunately, this time he had to endure it all, because all his strength was spent on not flying out of the boat. There was not an ounce of compassion on her face, which reminded us of her true nature. Only when she let go of him did she cover her face a little and say that she was very sorry for putting him through all that, but that they had reached their destination in a short time. Well, there was nothing to be done about what had already happened, so as soon as Vanel came to his senses, he started looking around. However, wherever he looked, there was only dark water and an endless horizon, from which the wind was driving dark clouds. Vanel still could not believe that they had really gone out into the endless sea on a small wooden boat, even though his companion was very unreliable. He just sat there, unable to move. Looking at one point, Vanel tried to calm himself down, and his thoughts were only about how dark and deep the sea was around him, and what monsters could be hiding there. At night, the Black Sea was pitch black, and until the clouds moved away, it was too dark to see even a meter ahead. In addition, the complete calmness contributed to the absence of waves, and created a perfect silence that made my ears ring. It was very scary and frightening, and thoughts of being eaten, drowned, or something even worse crept into his head. However, when he looked at LaBelle's face, he froze, watching her motionless silhouette in front of him, looking only forward. This silence was mesmerizing and no one wanted to break it. The only question that remained was why she was silent. Coming closer to LaBelle, he asked her what had happened to her, because it was not often that he could see her worried look. However, she smiled and said that everything was fine. In fact, she had hoped for better weather, but instead they were surrounded by clouds. It was a shame that they had to walk such a long distance and waste their energy, but there was nothing they could do about the weather. Sitting down, Vanel wondered why she had brought them to this particular place, because if she had wanted to just look at the stars, it would have been better to stay on the coast, or in the manor itself. Of course, LaBelle knew that this would have been the right decision, but she could not overcome her desires. She really wanted to see the stars again at this very place where she had spent many years, so she asked our hero to go to sea with her. Recently, he said that he wanted to know more about her, so she told him that until that moment she had always looked at the stars alone. This information was somewhat sad, so he thought that he shouldn't interrupt her now and let her speak. LaBelle smiled sweetly when she felt sympathy and thanked him from the bottom of her heart for coming with her. For as long as she could remember, she had to sit in the sea all the time, not even knowing what she really looked like. At first, being in such a quiet and dark place didn't cause any problems, but when you stay in such a place for years or decades, it starts to drive you crazy. So one day she decided to swim as close to the light as possible. Every time LaBelle went higher, she expected something to change. Reaching the highest layer of the sea, she boldly peeked out at the surface creating a bunch of splashes of water that fell back into the sea with a splash. At the same time, 
LaBelle looked up to see something shiny and radiant scattered about, and then she spent hours admiring this miracle. Not even realizing that the shining objects above were stars, she continued to watch them. Even so, it was a wonderful time that will always remain in her memory. However, going out to sea or staying to look at the stars from the land did not change anything. She was always lonely. There was no one else who could tell her about those lights floating in the night sky. No one had ever told LaBelle what those constellations were, so she had to find out for herself. Hearing this, Fennel could not believe that this was possible and continued to sympathize with her hard life. However, in response, she smiled as usual, hinting that it was all in the past. That's why she wanted to contemplate the stars at such an important place for her together with our hero, but unfortunately, it never happened. But LaBelle was still happy to be able to tell this story, lifting a huge burden from her shoulders. Apologizing for the fact that her plan had failed miserably, she offered to return home because the wind was getting stronger and colder. Instead, Vanel grabbed her by the shoulders and asked her to wait a little longer until the clouds cleared. He was brought by force to the middle of the sea, but he could not see anything, so he asked to wait for the promised starry sky. Eventually, he looked down at the bottom of the boat and remained silent for a while, trying to think of something else. Unable to think of anything else, Vanel said that he simply could not accept this injustice of fate. He didn't know if it was right or not, but LaBelle was happy to hear him say that, so she smiled at him affectionately. She was grateful to him for sacrificing his desires for her in spite of everything and asking him to stay. Agreeing to his request, LaBelle asked him to sit back in the boat to enjoy the soothing silence. As she had said, the preparations for the trip were top-notch. Everything had been thought out to the smallest detail, and there was even a warm blanket on the boat. Still, they had to stay at sea for some time listening to the waves crashing on the side and drinking a warm drink that had been prepared in the kitchen of the mansion. When the clouds parted and they could see the starry sky, Vanel was ready to wait until the stars appeared. For quite a while, watching the horizon, he could not believe that he was fulfilling the demon's wishes, but now he felt that it was the right thing to do. Time passed very slowly, so his eyes slowly began to close under the influence of the warm blanket and tea, but he was not allowed to fall asleep completely. LaBelle began to wake him up slowly and ask him to wake up, even though she knew he was tired. Rubbing his sleepy eyes, he apologized for falling asleep, but she was not interested in that. What was more important was how wide she was smiling as she looked up the mountain. Instead of sleeping, he was invited to look at the sky as well. Well, it was worth it. As soon as his eyes focused, Vanel saw a picture like he had never seen in his entire life. They were surrounded by billions of stars and constellations that were reflected in the water creating the illusion of an endless starry sky. Suddenly one of the stars fell, and our hero saw it and immediately started shouting about it. LaBelle immediately started looking for where he had seen it. However, it was in vain, because after that, fast trails of meteorite rain began to appear from all sides. It was an amazing sight that both of them saw for the first time, so they were delighted with the unexpected event. Now Vanel was really like a normal child, interested in everything and excited about new things. Looking at his reaction, she was glad they stayed at sea. She thanked him again for agreeing to keep her company on this short journey. Though she had seen the stars many times before, it was the first time she had ever been so excited and happy. It was fun and exciting, especially when you look at the stars with someone in the middle of the sea. However, as soon as she spoke about her feelings, a memory flashed through his mind of when he and his parents were having fun. He felt like he had almost forgotten about it and had a lump of sadness in the middle of his throat. If not for LaBelle, he would have continued to withdraw further and further into himself. Thanks to her sonorous voice telling him to make a wish on the shooting stars, Vanel was able to quickly emerge from the memories of the past. Unfortunately, she hadn't thought this moment through, so now she continued to rush from side to side trying to come up with a wish. She seemed too greedy to him, but thanks to this, he came to his senses. From a scientific point of view, making a wish on a shooting star was a ridiculous idea. It was just a stone that flew from outer space and burned under the influence of the Earth's atmosphere. Paying attention to Vanel's words, she froze, looking at him with puzzled eyes. However, turning to the other side of her, he continued to talk about the stars, but smiling. Even if she can't decide now what she wants, there is nothing wrong with that. In any case, someday the day will come again when they will be able to see a meteor shower, and then she will be able to make her cherished wish. As he wrapped himself tighter in the blanket, he did not forget to hint to her that he was very busy with his studies, so he did not know when he would be free for such a trip next time. But even tonight was enough for her, because Vanel was a really good kid. Even though she complimented him every time, he couldn't get used to it, 
so he said he didn't want to sit alone in the middle of the sea with her next time. Well, after this conversation, they stayed in the boat for a long time. Without noticing it, our hero fell asleep quite soundly, and his head rested on the shoulder of Labelle, who was still looking at the stars. Looking down, she noticed how relaxed he was, so she could not be afraid to move. Stretching her arms forward, Labelle hugged him as gently as she could, warming him with her warmth. After that, she wished him sweet dreams and continued to watch the stars that continued to fall and reflect in the dark sea. The white walls of the mansion pressed heavily on Vanel, who kept looking around, not understanding how he had ended up there. Of course, he felt that something was wrong, but he did not know the reason for his concern. He continued walking along the dark corridors, leaning against the wall, until he heard Labelle's voice. Quietly sneaking up behind him, she gently grabbed his face with her warm palms, sincerely worried about our hero. She did not know why he was walking around the mansion alone, but she was sure that they needed to continue what they had started. But he didn't know what she was talking about, so he sincerely didn't understand her words and decided to ask her again. However, after he asked her, she smiled slyly, wanting to joke a little. Labelle leaned as close to him as possible so that he could hear her breathing. She lowered her voice as much as possible and whispered that it was time for them to resume their studies. At the same moment, Vanel screamed loudly, asking her to wait and let him go. Opening his eyes in fright, he jumped out of bed, throwing the duvet far away from his feet. His heart was beating like crazy. But fortunately, it was just a dream. But it was so realistic that it took him a while to realize when the line between waking up and sleeping was crossed. With a heavy sigh, the protagonist wiped the sweat from his forehead and tried to calm himself down. He began to tell himself that this horror would not happen again. His mind was a mess, because it was hard to live with the fact that Labelle started coming even in his dreams. Remembering what had happened just a minute ago scared him. It was a little creepy, because that sweet voice tempted him every time to forget about his own interests and obey her orders. Looking around his room, Fennell didn't know what time it was, but for some reason he felt quite refreshed. He thought he had slept too long, assuming that was why he was dreaming. After gathering his thoughts, he decided to get ready, because he couldn't sleep anymore and it seemed like it was lunchtime. But a soft snoring stopped him, forcing him to pull the covers off the free part of the bed. As soon as he did so, he immediately saw Libelle sleeping with her hair down in a maid's uniform, but for some reason without a cap and white apron. Looking at the unexpected visitor, his eyes swam, and his brain refused to process the information. Still, it was hard to get used to the fact that she constantly did only what she wanted. He even screamed in fright and crawled away as far as possible. During her time as a maid, she had managed to do a lot of things, but she had never made her way into his bed. Panic was evident on her face. Just yesterday in the evening they had gone to the sea together to see the stars, and now they were in the room together. For some reason, the only thing he remembered was how bad it felt to be in the boat, which was moving at an incredible speed. But what happened next? The pitch blackness that obscured his memories made it impossible to recall all the events. At the same time, Labelle began to wake up, having heard his cry. Rubbing her sleepy eyes, she put on her glasses and began to try to get herself in order. Not understanding what was happening, she asked in a quiet voice what he was doing in her room. However, this question was supposed to be asked by our hero, who was confused from the very beginning. To dispel this misunderstanding, he immediately reminded her that it was his room, and when he woke up, she was already on his bed. Looking around, she saw a room much bigger than hers, so she immediately agreed with his words. Having calmed down a bit, Fennell admitted that he did not remember much. No matter how much he tried to dig through his memories, nothing came up. Only the dark emptiness that had long surrounded them in the middle of the sea. Hearing these words, she was immediately upset, because he could not remember how they had huddled together from the cold and spent time together. Surely he could at least remember how they had made astronomical observations. Clutching her reddened cheeks, she smiled slightly, for it was the first night they had spent together. But the protagonist could not agree with her distorted words. Although he was excited when he saw the stars, it had nothing to do with her story. Laughing out loud at his reaction, Labelle began to wipe away the tears that had come from laughing. After all, Vanel was worth a little teasing. But in response to this, he emphasized that he did not see anything funny in it. However, this did nothing, because as usual, they did not listen to him. However, remembering how tired he was, she replied that it was no wonder he had forgotten many things. After Vanel fell asleep on the boat, she picked him up and returned to the mansion. Even then, Labelle tried to carry him as slowly as possible so as not to wake him up. However, 
He was so sound asleep that he did not even feel the boat hit the dock. The story, pieced together in small pieces, finally formed a puzzle that explained why they had fallen asleep in the same room. It seems that she was more tired than she thought. After she put our hero to bed, she also did not notice how she began to fall asleep. Probably just when she was completely relaxed, the tentacles automatically let her hair down and took off her glasses, preparing her for sleep. Nevertheless, if we ignore the fact that the trip was energy-consuming and everyone was very mentally exhausted, we could safely say that it was quite a fun astronomical observation that was worth all the effort. With a sweet smile, LaBelle frankly admitted that she would agree to another such trip and would love to look at the stars again. Although Vanel was a young man full of energy, he still did not understand where she got so much energy. But he also enjoyed the journey, so he couldn't help but agree with her. The protagonist had forgotten a lot of things from that trip, so he would be happy to go on another one. The only thing that happened in the morning was a big disadvantage, and after that, he didn't want to do it again. It was too embarrassing to wake up with someone else in his room. Recalling this embarrassing morning, he quickly turned away from Libelle, who noticed. Lately, she thought he was too restless, so she immediately asked him what was wrong with him. He just hummed loudly and rolled his eyes. Of course, he wasn't going to tell her everything on his mind, so he immediately changed the subject. Looking at Libelle, who was not dressed as a maid, he said that he was acting like that because she was unprofessional. But he had forgotten who he was dealing with, because after that she wanted to verify his words and check his condition in a more effective way. It was too predictable, and as if reading her mind, our hero said that she shouldn't even think about it. However, it was too late, because its fast tentacles had already broken free and instantly wrapped around his neck. She didn't care what Vanel was hiding from her, because she could find out for herself. Does he feel something different? Wrapping her arms around him, she began to whisper in his ear, asking him to tell her even the things that were difficult to talk about. She was his only friend to whom he could open up, but he preferred to keep his emotions in check. Raising her hand closer to his face, she gave an example of an unpleasant dream she might have had that night. This would not be surprising to her, as she had lived long enough to read people like an open book. Her example hit the nail on the head. After all, that was exactly what he didn't want to talk about. The way she stood close to him made his heart beat faster, and her soft whisper made him sweat and goosebumps. He couldn't believe that she could guess so quickly the reason why he was so anxious. For fear of being ridiculed, his pupils narrowed to a small dot. However, in the same second, she let go of him and smiled as if nothing had happened, and asked him about the reason for his excitement. As it turned out, no one had guessed about his dream. Realizing this, he did not know what to do. This time, however, her joking got out of hand. As soon as she looked at him, he quickly turned away. LaBelle watched his reaction for quite a while, trying to unravel his mood, but it was all in vain. Until one moment. As soon as she noticed how embarrassed he was, it was as if she too had been thrown into red paint. Finally, she realized that her guesses had hit the mark, thus embarrassing him. She couldn't just let this problem go unresolved, so as an adult, she immediately asked him if her words were true. But there was only silence in response. Vanel was ready to tell anything, but not how he dreamed about her. At the same moment, someone started knocking hard on his bedroom door. After no one answered, a female voice asked our hero if he was awake. They did not expect this, so they panicked. They still had hope that no one would come in. As it turned out, it was another maid who came because of the loud noise coming from his room. Of course, no one was going to reveal to her that he had someone else in his room. He quickly answered so she wouldn't worry. Immediately putting on her cap and apron, LaBelle told Vanel that she would take care of her colleague and get her out as soon as possible. This time, no one argued with her, because anyone entering his room now would have suspected something was wrong. Not wanting to create any more misunderstandings, he sat down on the bed and listened to her report on her work. As expected, LaBelle happily came out of his room and greeted the maid, warning her that he was getting dressed. If the girl didn't mind, she would be notified immediately when he was done. This seemed strange at first, so she peeked into the room to make sure he was really getting dressed. Luckily, he was sitting there in just his pants and shirt, so she believed his words. As it turned out, a real tutor was to be brought to him very soon. That is why she came to warn Vanel. For some reason, it was at this moment that LaBelle's heart skipped a beat. She realized that very soon they would spend less and less time together. However, this person was the best fit for the role, so it would be more than possible to catch up with the school program. There was little time left to prepare, so they were asked to get ready as soon as possible and wait until their mansion was visited by guests. 
Today, another person could come between LaBelle and Vanel. Miss Marcia was complimented, because that day she did not hide her good mood and was surprisingly happy. Of course, she paid attention to these words and thanked them. She agreed with her assistant's words. The reason was that she hadn't seen Vanel for quite some time, who for some reason never left his house. Besides, Sarah also wanted to get to know him. After receiving a letter asking her to become a tutor, she insisted on going to him. Without arguing with her, the maids agreed to the meeting and meekly followed her. When she stopped in front of the church, Marcia put her hands together and clasped a golden cross. She said that her daily actions were controlled by God, who was always watching her. That is why she praised him and was grateful from the bottom of her heart. At the same time, Sarah Lott decided to remind her that since she had decided to leave, they would have to pack their bags quickly. After all, they were going to Vanel with a specific purpose, and it would be nice to see his reaction when he saw them on the road. Marcia was proud to be the cathedral's exorcist. Unlike in the past, she had grown considerably and was now at a higher level of knowledge. After leaving their home, they had spent a lot of time on the road, so they were somewhat tired, but they could not show it in front of the owners of the manor. Gathering their strength and thoughts, they set foot on the Norton family's land with their heads held high. Marcia was glad that they had not encountered any danger on their way, so she sincerely prayed to God for protecting them all this time. However, immediately afterwards, she put her cold palms to her cheeks to cool her mind a bit, because she was about to meet Vanel for the first time in a year. She couldn't find a place to stay because of our hero, so when she heard that she had the opportunity to go to him, she immediately agreed. Overjoyed, she lost control of her emotions and immediately walked through the main door. However, she had imagined her meeting somewhat differently than it actually happened. Taking advantage of her last free hours, LaBelle continued to tease our hero. By touching his skin, she was making him very uncomfortable, because she knew that he did not like close contact. As luck would have it, this all happened in the lobby, so when the door opened, it was hard not to notice them. Worried for Marcia's well-being, Sarah Lott stood in front of her, blocking her view of this absurdity, because she realized how important Vanel was to her but she had already realized that something suspicious was going on. Emerging from the shadow of her servant, Marcia immediately asked our hero who was standing next to him and why he was bothering him. However, he could not come up with anything truthful in response, because from the outside it really looked suspicious. She had never met a maid like LaBelle before, so she didn't even know if there was anyone else in the world who was so beautiful and had a perfect figure. She was too suspicious for a simple servant. Naturally, after seeing her, she thought that she might be a succubus, and immediately declared her a suspect. But she was only partially right, because even though there was a misunderstanding with the monster's appearance, she immediately realized that the maid was no ordinary person. The only thing that saved her in this situation was Sarah Lott's sober thinking, who instantly calmed Marcia down and apologized. Unfortunately, her mistress was somewhat unrestrained in her thinking because she often reads about demons. But she didn't understand how a maid could be connected to these creatures. Who could have known that she would be so close to the truth? For the first time in a long time, she was able to be revealed. However, remembering that Libel had appeared in his house relatively recently, Vanel remembered that no one knew her and decided to introduce her. But Sarah started first, and again apologizing for her manners, introduced herself as a servant of the Cointel family. Marcia was the eldest daughter of the family, whose father was a priest, and she was an apprentice exorcist. The last words were somewhat familiar to him, so after a little digging in his memory, Vanel remembered something. When he was at school, he had advised her to become an exorcist, because in this way, she would be like her father, who did good deeds and helped ordinary people. With such abilities, she could easily fight Libelle on equal terms, and even destroy her someday. However, there is no need to dwell on this now, because it is better to focus on the reason for their arrival. Analyzing the words of the maid who came to see him in the morning, it was not difficult to guess that she was his tutor. But that was not the case. Sarah Lott, who has much more experience than her immature mistress, came to teach him. Marcia herself was a bonus, so when she heard this, she started screaming. In this case, the protagonist did not understand why she came, because the boat trip is very exhausting, so most people refuse to travel just like that. After this question, Marcia blushed. Ashamed, she said that she had come here to meet him. She had something to tell him, so she set off on the journey as soon as she could. To save her mistress's situation, she said that she had come to study. It was spring break at school, and she would be sad to be home alone. In fact, only one person was expected to visit, so after their story, 
LaBelle replied that she would ask the maid to clean another room. After saying that, she immediately went to fulfill her promise. After finishing all the preparations, Fennell kindly showed them around the mansion and the rooms. After that, he left the guests to rest and went to his room. But as soon as he turned in the other direction, Marcia stopped him. Out of sheer politeness, he asked her if she liked the room he had prepared, and she was overjoyed to hear him say that it had been chosen according to her preferences. She then embarrassingly admitted that she had been worried about the amount of luggage she had taken all along, thinking it wouldn't fit. To tell the truth, it was a little scary to see Sarah Lott carrying an incredible amount of stuff without any hesitation, but it went quite well. Still, her smile quickly faded when she remembered how long it had been since she had seen Vanel. He could see how worried her face was, but he didn't want to focus on that. Even though he had been away from school for a while, Marcia didn't see anything wrong with that. Everyone has the right to choose, so she didn't judge him for it. Her words were like honey on a wound, so after hearing them, our hero thought about it and looked out the window. Still, he was glad she came to see him. For him, it made no difference where he studied, whether it was at school or at home. The environment did not change the fact that he was treated like garbage. However, now Marcia was standing next to him, listening to him calmly. At the very moment she heard him being insulted, she shouted out that she wanted him to be at school with her. This shout embarrassed him and drove away his bad thoughts. Even if he did come back, would she be happy to be in different classes, since they were assigned to different parallels? Of course, she had forgotten about this, so she blushed at this obvious fact. Looking down at her eyes in sadness, she caught herself thinking that even in this situation, she would have been happy to see him at least in the hallway during recess. Just meeting him for a few seconds would have made her incredibly happy. She missed the times when she used to come to the library to watch our hero study. No matter how long or short the break was, she knew exactly where to look for him. Just one glance at him was enough to recharge her batteries for the rest of the day and make her happy. Now, however, these simple things are gone, turning her life into a black and white movie. The way Marcia was immersed in her memories was immediately noticeable, so Vanel called her name. Coming almost to her side, he raised his hand above her head and equalized his height. It seemed that she was a little taller, so he decided to ask her directly. However, she immediately blushed. Taking a step back, Marcia was so embarrassed that she couldn't even answer him. It seemed like a simple question about height, but how much it threw her off balance. Just recently she was shorter than him, and now she has become a real lady. However, this is not surprising, because they had not seen each other for almost a year. The protagonist realized how stupid he had asked the question and apologized. He couldn't see this moment coming at all, so he decided to close the conversation. Even so, he was grateful to them for coming, because there were more people in the house with whom he could not only talk, but also have fun. His conversation sounded like a sad monologue with a strained smile, but his sincere words of gratitude warmed Marcia's heart. Her shame disappeared and her voice returned to normal. Smiling at him, she said that she was also glad to meet him after a long time apart. She was sure that the days spent together with Vanel would be filled with fun and adventure. Succumbing to the atmosphere, she suggested that starting tomorrow they would study together and do their best to achieve the best results. That's how this intense day ended, full of long conversations and new and unexpected meetings. When the moon replaced the sun, the mansion instantly became empty. The guests went to their bedrooms, and the maids, having finished cleaning, went to small rooms. Wandering down the corridor in his pajamas, Vanel tried to sneak into the attic with his eyes almost closed. For him, the day flew by incredibly quickly, because he was busy with guests almost all the time. And it was strange for him that Marcia and the others were in his house. Passing by a huge window with a beautiful moon shining through it, he stopped and began to admire it. Still, he wanted to read a book in his secret city, even though his eyes were sticking together from fatigue. However, for some reason, at that very moment he caught himself in a strange feeling that was not like anything else. It kept bothering him, so he concentrated on it until he realized what had happened. As it turned out, it was sadness that was weighing on him. Suddenly he realized that he had hardly spoken to Libelle today, who had hardly seen him since the guests had arrived. But as the saying goes, you remember the sunshine with a twinkle in it. Sticky and nimble tentacles touched his back, slowly wrapping around his arms. With incredible speed, he was turned around to face them, locked in a tight embrace. He was not even given a chance to take a breath of air, let alone a chance to open his eyes or escape. Only one person was capable of doing that. LaBelle smiled cheerfully when she gave him clues. She hinted that he had been captured by a beautiful maid who wore glasses and loved to play pranks. 
In his head, he could only think of her in this way, so he immediately tried to escape again. This time, the grip was lessened, and he was able to talk freely. But her jokes made him angry again, and he shouted that she was the only person in the estate who was capable of such a prank. Vanel didn't understand why she always appeared so suddenly, and was ready to lecture her. But when he saw a tray with a tea set for one person, he kept quiet. The unexpected dishes at such a late hour confused him a bit, so he asked where she was going. But the answer was obvious, for she immediately guessed that he would spend the night in the attic reading his precious books. It was supposed to be cool that night, so she prepared a warm drink and immediately went to him. He was read like an open book, which often made him angry, because he wanted to keep his intentions a secret. However, he finally admitted that Libelle was right in her guesses. Delighted with his honest answer, she offered to accompany him. They spent the entire trip in silence, and only the tinkling of the service held by one of the tentacles sometimes diluted the atmosphere. Vanel kept looking at Libelle, thinking about her powers. The only thing that bound them was the contract. There wasn't a day that went by when he didn't think about breaking free of it. To be honest, he was thinking about it now. For now, not only evil, but also exorcists were under the same roof. Although they weren't quite professionals yet, even they had to understand how to deal with evil spirits. He didn't know what they thought about the situation, but everything worked out as well as possible. The protagonist couldn't wait for the exorcist to drive her out of the house, so he tried to behave calmly and not arouse suspicion. However, he didn't do it well enough, because LaBelle immediately asked him what happened. He was looking at her too closely, which made her even more embarrassed. Of course, she couldn't let this chance to mock him go to waste, so she laughed and suggested that he was acting this way because he didn't have enough attention. Today, the mansion was visited by guests, which meant that she had little time to spend with him. However, when he heard her words, he immediately cried out, saying that it was not so. But in response, he received a confession from Libelle, who told him without a shred of doubt how lonely she had been all day. It was a rather unexpected statement that made all of his thoughts instantly confused. He was confused, so it was no problem to hug him now. Hugging Vanel, she asked him to let her go so that she could squeeze him tightly and talk calmly. However, she heard arguing and shouting again. Meanwhile, Marcia sat in the room in complete silence. She was expressing her dissatisfaction with Labelle, who had been suspicious to her from the beginning. Sarah asked her if she was sure about her guesses, but the answer did not change. Labelle's vibe was suspicious. In addition, there was a strange presence in the house that could not be missed. Marcia remembered everything she had been taught as an exorcist, so there could be no mistake. Her jealousy was blinding, so she did her best not to start tearing her hair out. The way Vanel had been constantly picked on was never far from her mind. Every time she thought about it, she started to freak out. Only Sarah listened tiredly to her cries, which grew louder and louder each time. Sighing heavily, she turned her gaze to the window, where a bright moon was shining through. Stepping on the cold and damp tiles, Vanel crossed the threshold of the bathtub and prepared for the water treatment. He had worked hard today, and he was tired, dreaming of nothing more than relaxing in the hot water and unwinding. However, like all the plans he had made before, LaBelle destroyed them. Holding a shower head in her hands, she smiled slyly and offered her help. While our hero was sitting on a stool in confusion, she was rubbing his back with a soft sponge because she always kept her words. Our hero did not understand at what point it happened and how she got into the bathroom, because he was sure he had closed the door behind him. LaBelle's clothes got wet, so she had to take off her cap and apron, which were a bit in the way. The warm steam was spreading more and more in the cold bathroom and making her head spin. So Vanel had to restrain herself from fainting. Several days passed since the guests arrived. On the very first day, he took up his studies responsibly and listened attentively to Sarah who expressed no emotions other than indifference. If he did not understand something, he could always ask Marcia, who sat at the same table with him and repeated the topic he had learned. Of course, just like normal school children, they had breaks during which they could eat snacks. Libelle usually came at different times, thus interrupting the lessons. She did not mean to harm him, but simply brought cookies in the shape of small octopuses to cheer them up. By some miracle, he managed to survive these days. One evening, he was tiredly heading to the bathroom, as he had only one more thing to do before going to bed. Vanel was getting very tired from frequent use of his head, but there was no escaping it. When he opened the door, he was very surprised to see LaBelle there, smiling happily at him. As soon as she noticed him, she immediately praised him for his hard work, but why she was there was still unclear. 
Quickly turning behind the door to the dressing room, he poked his reddened head out and asked her what she was doing there. Besides, the maids had their own bathroom, and she couldn't be here in the evening for no reason. With a sly smile, LaBelle showed the swimsuit she was hiding under her clothes. She saw the protagonist studying hard, so she wanted to take care of him every minute. But in response, he asked her to put her clothes down and not to show herself like that in front of him anymore. She sat Vanel down on a stool and asked him not to be shy and to trust her experience. However, he already knew that this would make him even more tired, so he began to resist and begged her to listen at least this time. Still, she managed to quickly pour a bowl of water on him and cut off his escape route by hiding the towels. Now, whether he wanted to or not, he would have to do as she asked. Walking over to one of the shelves, she took out a wide sponge and began to slowly approach him. However, he again objected, because he did not like the idea at all. Our hero argued that he was old enough to do it himself. He took the sponge and sat back down. If he had left it up to her, he would have thought that she wanted to do something strange, like touching with cold tentacles. The thoughts he expressed in one breath amazed her, because LaBelle had never even thought about it. However, she liked the idea, so she was ready to make fun of him at any time. Still, Vanel realized too late that he shouldn't have said that. She was ready to follow him through fire and water to be of some use to him. Letting all her nimble limbs loose, LaBelle began to tease him with loud screams. But she justified her actions by saying that with her help, he would spend much less time in the room. Moreover, she could not stay in the heat for a long time, but the protagonist did not understand this. Expressing great sadness, she reminded him that at this rate she would turn into a boiled octopus. If that was the case, our hero believed that she did not need to take a hot bath. In fact, he didn't want anyone to help him like a small child. Vanel could do it perfectly well on his own, so he resisted more and more each time. He wanted to be useful, so he kept begging her to help him, because it wouldn't take long and it wouldn't be scary at all. Still, he didn't like it and refused outright. After taking the soap, our hero looked at her strangely. Standing completely in the foam, he did not understand why he was being asked to at least wash his head, but he knew very well that she would not calm down. He was in two minds about the rightness of his actions. In the end, he agreed to it, provided she did nothing wrong. Lebel's eyes immediately sparkled with happiness, and then she took action. Standing behind him, she plunged her hands into his hair, foaming soap that contained fragrant herbs. Her movement slowly massaged his skin, completely relaxing his body. Worried about his condition, she asked him if he was okay, because the foam could accidentally get into his eyes. However, he sat calmly and enjoyed her movements. Literally dying from the heat, Vanel thought it was even better than he had imagined. For a while, he even forgot that there was a maid behind him who loved to abuse him. However, the thought that there was real evil behind him did not leave him. He became curious about the guests living in the mansion now, so he decided to break the silence and share his thoughts with LaBelle. It had been a long time since he had had visitors, but what were they doing now? This conversation made her smile as she recalled all the things she had noticed about their behavior. As for Marcia, she showed signs of hostility from the very beginning. No matter how many times they tried to talk to her, she threatened LaBelle every time. She was not given any reason for this, so this reaction was very strange. At the same time, warm water poured over his head, gradually beginning to wash away the foam from his skin. The protagonist did not know whether they had realized that LaBelle was a demon. However, the more he thought about it, the more he got confused in his speculations. Moreover, she compared Marsha's behavior to the barking of a puppy, which she found terribly cute. With the others, if she had such a character, it was easy to make fun of her. However, Vanel himself did not see anything funny in this. But what about Sarilot? How did she behave at the estate and did she get along with the local servants? He was interested in absolutely everything, so he calmly listened to LaBelle's observations. However, when he asked her a question, the smile on her face fell off and she became a little sad, remembering the last days she had spent in the same company. Sarilot was a rather silent person. Every time they crossed paths at work, she would silently follow Marcia, glancing sideways at LaBelle. Her gaze was always directed only at her, but she chose not to talk about it. Instead of this strange information, Vanel was told that she was a wonderful person who knew her place. In addition, Sarah Lott was very strong and could lift loads much heavier than herself. At least that's what LaBelle thought of her. In the end, all this torment was over for our hero. He calmly climbed into a bathtub full of water, immersing himself up to his neck. It was true bliss, but if he was alone it would have been much better. At least he thought so. 
LaBelle did not give him even a minute to rest. This time she leaned against the wall and asked him about the thoughts that kept him flying in prostration. However, this was not something that needed to be addressed, because he did manage to relax a little. During the day of watching Vanel studying hard, she noticed how hard it was for him. That's why she had been begging for a chance to help him for so long, and now she was glad that she could help him at least a little. He really appreciated it, and thanked her sincerely for her help. As usual, he obeyed everything she said, but this time he did not regret his decision to trust her. Time passed quickly, so when he looked out the window, he noticed the stars. They had been visible in the sky for a long time, reminding him to go to bed. In the end, he finally managed to get Lubelle out of the bathroom and find a towel and a nightgown. She waited faithfully for him at the door, and as soon as he came out, they went to the bedroom together. Vanel's skin was still steaming, which made it difficult to move around. With every step he took, he was more and more sleepy. It took them a long time, but they were both glad that they had managed to relieve their tiredness. Remembering that there was a warm blanket at hand, they offered him to wrap himself in it, at least until they got to the room, because if his skin cooled down too quickly, he might get sick. At that moment, Marcia appeared on their way. Noticing the protagonist, she blushed and was happy to see him. Saralot stood calmly with her, silently greeting her and nodding her head. In response, LaBelle smiled and greeted the guests, but they did not like it. Especially Marcia, who had disliked her from the beginning because she was so close to Vanel. She didn't want to see her, so she told her directly to her face that LaBelle was not needed here. In response, she heard fake sadness and grief. Only our hero did not understand what was happening and stood confused in the middle of the corridor. In the end, to protect her dignity, Marcia decided to retreat this time and return to her room. Finally, she pointed her finger at LaBelle and reminded her that she could see right through her, but in response, she was only wished sweet dreams. LaBelle sincerely did not understand why the guests were behaving this way, which led her to assume that they hated her. However, if this were true, they would not even talk to her, let alone stay under the same roof. Looking in the wake of the angry Marcia, Vanel tiredly asked Saralot why she did not follow Marcia. However, she was used to this and said that it was just the way things were. She was sure that she could get to the room on her own. These were rather harsh words, because even though she was a guest, she still frightened her with her indifference. Besides, she had no hurry, because she wanted to talk to Libelle. She had no choice, but she had never been afraid of frank conversations before, so she agreed to talk to her right away. But only on the condition that she take Vanel to the room. It was supposed to be a private conversation, so Saralot agreed to the offer and walked with them to their destination. This time LaBelle was surprisingly calm and focused. It was a rare expression to see on her face. Usually she always walked with a wide smile, especially in the presence of our hero. The fight between them did not bode well. The conversation between the demon and the exorcist's servant was suspicious in itself. Perhaps this night her character would be fully revealed. Vanel had no right to interfere in their private lives, and after apologizing for being sent away, he silently left, accompanied by them. After closing the door behind him, they left his room and went down the hall. Of course, he was terribly curious about what they were going to talk about, so he secretly followed where they were going. He stood by the door, trying not to make much noise. For some reason, LaBelle seemed strange to him today, and that made him even more interested in their secrets. It was risky, because he could be found out at any moment, but his curiosity got the better of him. Putting his ear to the door, the protagonist focused on what he heard, because all the sounds were muffled. However, he could make out some things. As he suspected, Saralot asked her how long she would play the fool and pretend to be an ordinary maid. After all, she already knew her true nature. After a short pause, she whispered her suspicion. It was here, when no one was around, that LaBelle could show herself, so she was deliberately thrown off balance. Saralot kept pressuring her morally, but she would not confess. In the end, she decided to use her trump card and openly called her one of the devil's creatures. At that moment, Vanel's heart skipped a beat, because he could not believe that someone else realized what LaBelle was hiding behind her smile. However, she nervously put on a smile and replied that it was a silly joke. Looking around, she pretended not to understand what they were saying. However, Saralot was not stupid. Taking LaBelle by the collar, she pushed her against the door. Naturally, the protagonist was frightened by this and instantly backed away. Although he did not know what was happening there, he returned almost immediately. Coming up to her, Saralot warned her not to even think of lying. 
she knew exactly what her relatives smelled like. In time, she added that she was good at recognizing demons who were not doing their job. LaBelle's sly smile reappeared on her face. She instantly released her tentacles. Sarah had really done a good job if she was able to expose her true nature. But there was still one more question. Who was Sarlot? At the same moment, her gaze narrowed, and an oppressive aura hung in the air. Sarah had no intention of revealing her identity to a low-class demon, but if he asked, she would kindly tell him about herself. Lowering her voice as much as possible, she proudly declared that she was the ruler of hell, so LaBelle needed to realize her place. At the same moment, Vanel panicked, because all his senses were sounding the alarm. Something was going wrong. Without realizing it, he immediately burst into the room and loudly ordered them both to stop. From their surprise, one could immediately guess that they had not expected this. And so he remained standing at the entrance to the room under the scrutiny of two pairs of eyes. Luckily, the girl's voice that was tirelessly calling Sarah Lott's name could not be heard from the other side of the corridor. As one might have guessed, it was Marcia who ran to her in tears. She shouted that this mansion seemed strange to her, because no matter how long she walked to the room, she could not find the right way. The other maids immediately came to the sound of her cry, but they could not calm her down, so they simply went with her to find Sarah In this way, she saved our hero, who himself showed that he had heard their secret. After gesturing to Akursha to stand still, Sarah sighed heavily. Still, working with Marcia sucked a lot of moral strength. She silently listened to the story of how she got lost. For some reason, the demon's conversation remained open. Sarah warned that they would return to this topic, but a little later. Finally, she looked LaBelle in the eye and made it clear with a glance that she considered her a common fake. At this rate, she was unlikely to be able to hide her nature for long. Vanel had not expected Sarah to bow instead of saying goodbye, so he took a step back in fear. He watched her movements closely and was able to relax only when the silhouette disappeared behind the door. When he turned back to LaBelle, he saw her grieving for the first time. He didn't even know what to say, staying in the same place for a while. For some reason, at that moment, he compared her to himself. At school, the other kids didn't even consider what he said. He felt sorry to see her in such a depressed state, so he looked away and just stayed by her side. A few days have passed since Vanel decided to eavesdrop on LaBelle and Sarah Lott's secret conversation. Apparently, the latter is not happy with the fact that there is another demon in the mansion. Now, our hero was more and more interested in learning about the hierarchy of these creatures and what role they play. Leafing through one of the books, Marcia was looking for a topic that she wanted Vanel to explain because today was the day when she had the opportunity to get a little closer to him. She had been planning how to approach him for a long time, so this idea seemed like a good one. However, while listening to her questions about the study material, his brain boiled over and seemed unable to function properly. Stumbling over every word, he tried to say something adequate to her in response, but for some reason, only nonsense came out. They did not always stay in the manor studying the educational material and taking care of the guests, so from time to time they went out for a rest. For example, recently the weather allowed them to go to the beach, where they had a lot of fun. But he couldn't go on like that every day, so today the lessons resumed, and Marcia loaded him with questions. She didn't understand why he hardly listened to her or talked, but Sarah Lott, who spent most of her time with them, said that he behaved like this all day. Of course, she guessed that it might have something to do with the evening when he overheard them, but she couldn't do anything about it. In the meantime, LaBelle came over and immediately thanked her for her hard work and brought her a drink to wet her throat. But for some reason, the situation was very strange. She looked at the protagonist and asked him what was wrong, but he told her that he couldn't concentrate on his studies. It was impossible to continue like this, because everything that was told and explained to him flew by and was not remembered by him at all. Her smile expressed anger, because she knew exactly who was to blame for his condition. Sarah Lott immediately realized that she was being hinted at because she was the cause of this state. She already regretted her request to have a conversation between the demons, because after all, Vanel knew too much now. However, Marcia, who was a victim of the oppressive atmosphere, had no idea what was going on and could only ask them. For several days now, everyone had been acting very strangely. Sparks were constantly flying between Sarah Lott and Libelle whenever they were near each other and Vanel had become more silent than before. Did something happen while she was sleeping? However, she was not going to sit idly by. Perhaps it was God who had sent her such a test, deciding to test her strength. Now she had no choice but to do something about the situation. But what can a little girl do about it?
Looking out the window, which looked directly at the open sea, she had an idea, and then she went on the offensive. Interrupting the maid's conversation, she apologized and told them her idea, inviting them to come with her. She really wanted to be outside the walls of the estate more often, so this time Marcia took everyone to the water, the splash of which was incredibly soothing. Luckily, the weather was favorable for such a walk, so she was glad that her idea was listened to. The warm rays of the sun warmed their skin, and a gentle breeze brought them back to life. Marcia immediately ran to the sea and looked into it as if she were seeing it for the first time. The sunlight reflected off its surface and sparkled like precious stones. When she heard a loud splash, she immediately looked in its direction and saw rings spread across the water's surface, possibly left by some sea fish. Turning to the others, she thought that she was the only one having fun on this walk, so she tried to catch their attention and called them over. Libelle laughed at how much fun she was having running around on the beach, looking like a cute and happy child. Of course, Vanel knew she was acting strangely, so he immediately remembered how she had called Marcia a lively puppy, which was a bit rude to her. As if sensing that she was being mocked, Marcia immediately started screaming and threatening Libelle, because she had started this walk only for Vanel, who needed to rest. If someone is not interested, she does not keep anyone. But they were worried about our hero, and the maid had no right to leave her master alone in a place where he could be in danger. At least this was stated in the contract when she was hired. Marcia was not happy with this at all, so she got angry and went back to Saralot, begging them to do something about it. However, she also liked to make fun of her mistress, so she agreed with Labelle, arguing that it was unsettling to leave Vanel alone with someone who had somehow gotten lost in the mansion. Of course, she didn't like this answer, and immediately blushed and asked me to stop mentioning the incident. Everyone was constantly shouting about something that made my ears hurt. The protagonist believed that he was fine, and there was no need to worry about him, but he did not interfere in their argument. After moving away from them a few meters, he stopped at the edge where the waves reached. It was strange because he spent most of his time in silence in the attic, but his new friends had changed his pace of life dramatically. Now that he thought about it, he remembered that he hadn't really been to the beach lately, and it was hard to remember the last time he had felt so light. Now he was surrounded only by the sound of the surf, Marsha's cries and the singing of seagulls, which created new memories for him. If he thought about it, the last time was when he and Labelle had gone stargazing. Although he doesn't remember much from that day because of his fatigue, it was an amazing feeling that he would like to experience again. When Labelle noticed that our hero was staring at the horizon, she left the others and approached him. This time, she didn't try to sneak up on him, so as soon as she was near him, she smiled and asked him what he was looking at so intently. However, there was no answer to this question, nor was there a specific purpose for his staring. In the end, she was satisfied with just being with him, but the silence needed to be diluted with something. So at the same moment, she asked Vanel if it was true that he had come to the Day Sea with someone for the first time. The last time they went to the beach, it was late at night and they couldn't see anything but bright stars. Because of this, she didn't even notice that it was beautiful even when the sun was shining in the sky. Standing right in front of the protagonist, she awkwardly adjusted a strand of hair and admitted that she liked spending time with Vanel. Because of such a sincere and shameless confession, water immediately splashed on Labelle's face, and although she loved water, she did not expect such an attack. Marcia was openly jealous of him, so she tried to eliminate her rival in this way. To prevent them from talking, she asked Vanel to have fun with her. She assured Labelle that they didn't need her and that she could be free, but she stood her ground and said that Marcia just wanted attention. After that, she broke off as if she were off the chain and began to shout that it was not true. Vanel alone, as usual, did not understand what was happening, so he watched them for quite a while. It reminded him of the friendly family he used to have fun with, and now a smile spontaneously appeared on his face. Going into the water with Marcia, Labelle began to gently splash water on her, while Saralot stood calmly aside and did not interfere, unlike our hero, who was really worried about her. They still managed to have fun, so as soon as they were done, Marcia sat down on a bench and fell asleep right on her maid's lap. At one point, it seemed that she would never calm down from running so fast in the sand, but looking at her now, you can see that even a child as energetic as she is can get tired. Of course, she was excited when she saw the hated Labelle, who continued to mock her, but she was really having fun, which was very pleasing. Maybe she was just worried because everyone was gloomy that day, so she took everyone to the sea. However, Marcia overdid it, which made her so tired that she fell asleep on the bench. Fennel was very surprised that everyone understood everything but him, but he was still glad that they were worried about him and trying to take care of him. 
when he was convinced that she was really asleep, he mustered up the courage to tell Sarah Lot that he had overheard their conversation, but she already knew. From the beginning, she had planned to talk about it, but since he had decided to address the issue now, she was fine with it. It should never have happened, because humans shouldn't have contact with demons, but it was impossible to fix what had already happened. She also didn't expect our hero to be the first to talk about it, so she had to choose her words carefully. Having agreed to speak frankly, she started her story first, promising not to pay attention to his age and to speak to him as an equal. Trying not to wake Marcia, everyone spoke quietly. As Sarah Lott said earlier, she knew that LeBelle belonged to the Devil's family. That was the reason for their conversation. She also told them that she herself was a member of the Otherworldly, but Vanell's face did not show any surprise. Only the sincere curiosity in his eyes made it clear that he was ready to hear even more about it. But did LeBelle know about this when she first met them and kindly took care of them? Asking her directly, she smiled and confirmed it, because she was consciously fulfilling only her duties as a maid, like a normal person. This made him even sadder, because she had ignored her instincts of self-preservation and was just working. Of course, after that, he asked Sarah Lot about Marcia, who grew up in a family of exorcists, but she did not know that her closest servant was the devil, so she calmly confided in her all her secrets. This child was no different from her family, who simply used the demon for their own desires without even realizing who she really was. However, Sarah Lot still didn't want anyone to know about her, so she hid her true identity to the last. They dealt with this issue and the protagonist began to understand these creatures more, but then they also talked about the role of devils, which he did not know. This was what interested him the most, which is why he walked around the last few days as if mesmerized and unable to focus on anything else. The question was so simple that he didn't even need to ask. Sarah Lott immediately looked at LeBelle, who had become serious again. One might have thought she was the only devil who didn't want to do any harm, but she answered his question. From birth, they had been trained to make people miserable using the most vile methods. Of course, he expected to hear something like that, so he wasn't too surprised when she started talking like that. But what about LeBelle? Pointing at her, Sarah Lott asked him if he could say that she was fulfilling her role conscientiously. Even a few hours were enough for her to reveal her intentions. She knew that she was being watched and did not hide it at all, but with this information, LeBelle did nothing. On the contrary, she began to care even more about Vanel and neglect her duties as a demon. This was something Sarah Lott could not forgive. Although she never expressed emotions, now you could see all the anger and frustration in her eyes. Come to think of it, they hadn't had time to discuss something last time, so she took advantage of the situation and suggested that they continue now. The ruler of hell herself was in front of him, and none of the people present dared to contradict her. Holding such a responsible position, she reminded him that her job was to judge the souls of people who commit crimes. The same applies to demons who do not fulfill their roles. She had the right to punish them as well, especially them. Of course, LaBelle knew these rules perfectly well and guessed what end could await her, but she still continued to stand her ground. She was given one last chance to think about these words and make the right decision. Still, Sarah Lott hoped that she would soon give her a reasonable answer, so she took Marcia in her arms and went back to the mansion. But if you were a demon, what would you do? Fennell asked himself this question for a long time after the frank but brief conversation. There was much that was not clear, but he could not have found the answers to these questions on his own. When he came to, he started calling LeBelle, who did not respond to his voice. It was only when our hero came close to her and touched her hand that she shuddered and looked at him in horror. Sweat beaded on her forehead, and she began to stammer. Apologizing for her behavior, she said that she was a little distracted, thinking deeply about what she had said earlier. But that didn't make Vanell any less nervous, so he immediately asked her if she was sure she was okay. Sarah Lott reminded her of many rules that she wished she could forget forever, but it was impossible. So many things to remember made her feel like a heavy burden on her shoulders, but fortunately, Vanell was by her side now. She hugged him and asked him not to doubt her actions. No matter what happened, he had to know that LaBelle would forever remain his maid, who would support him in everything. He did not expect this, so he was surprised by her words, and did not even resist allowing her to hug him, knowing how hard it was for her now. Spreading out shells of different sizes and shapes in front of her, Marcia happily looked at her souvenirs that she had collected on the beach. As soon as they returned to the room, she cleaned them, and now they looked like real jewels. Sarah Lott, who was standing next to her bed, decided to ask her when she had collected them, because she hadn't noticed it at all. But they were just yesterday's shells, 
which she had washed thoroughly and left to dry overnight. She will remember that day for a long time, because the time spent with Vanel was worth the nerve she spent on Libelle. Marcia began to recall how they had fun and ran around the beach until the hot sun rose at the zenith. However, Sarilot, being a realist, corrected her words and told her version of what she saw yesterday. Then our hero behaved as always aloof and emotionless, constantly standing in front of the sea, allowing everyone to look only at his back. Marcia only objected to this, saying that she was distorting everything. After all, it takes a lot of courage to just talk to someone you care about, so her assistant would not have been able to understand her feelings of sadness. These words were somewhat painful, because everyone in this world feels something. So Sarilot had her own opinion on the matter. She could also be bothered by some things, but she just doesn't make a fuss and attract too much attention. Even now, she was worried about Marcia sitting with her pajamas on backwards. When she heard this, she began to make a fuss and asked why she hadn't been told about it earlier, but she never received an answer. Looking at the collected shells, she ran her fingers through them and looked for the best one. For some reason, everything did not go as Marcia would have liked. She was told that this was due to her clumsiness, as it was difficult to follow a plan that didn't exist. Even though this happened from time to time, Marcia was still glad that Vanel was feeling better. For this result, she was ready to do anything, even become a clown, to bring a smile to his face. Speaking of marine themes, she thought about giving him one of her shells as a memento of the event. But they were too rare, so she looked for them to take home with her. This choice was not an easy one for her and made her think. Only Sarilot, who was tired of listening to her, sighed and asked her what she should do. She immediately realized that there might be a job for her, so she took the initiative. But for some reason, at that very moment, she was looked at with eyes that read a new idea. Marcia smiled and immediately reached for the seashell that she decided to give her as a gift for her dedication and effort. After all, she had spent a lot of time solving her problems. It was quite an unexpected suggestion, so she froze for a moment. What would this child do if she found out that the person closest to her was a demon? But it's too early to worry about that. As long as she's in the dark, everything is fine. This gift was quite good, because the shell was so beautiful that it reflected the depth and color of Sarilot's eyes. Whoever she was, even such a small gesture melted her heart. Taking it, she gently squeezed it in her fist and thanked her. However, there was still one more problem. Gathering her strength, Marcia began to look at the rest of the shells in order to choose the perfect one for Vanel. She had to find the best one for him, so that he would remember it forever. Marcia went so deep into the search that she even saw Sarilot open her hand and look at a gift that was useless. Sometimes the attention shown is much more valuable than the price, so even such a trinket warmed her soul. She tucked it away in one of her jacket pockets and stayed to watch Marcia, who was taking a long time to make a decision and choose a gift for Vanel. Meanwhile, the light was on in the attic, so she could see the shelves full of books. Just looking for one book would take a lot of time for a clueless person to find, let alone make a choice. There were two in this room. Libelle, as always, continued to pester the protagonist with her attention, so now she asked him to tell her about a book he would like to read. But Vanel did not want to give up so easily and continued to resist. He hadn't asked her here for that. They needed to talk about what had happened recently. However, as usual, she changed the subject. A private conversation, which no one was supposed to know about, gave her a chance to mock our hero a little. The closer she got to him, the further he moved away. Eventually, Vanel grabbed a nearby pillow and shouted that he had something else in mind. He just wanted to talk, but Libelle was so close that she was distracting him from the planned conversation. After apologizing for her behavior, she laughed and asked what he wanted to talk about. When she heard that the topic would be about the conversation with Sarilot, she confirmed all her guesses. However, all the information given by the Mistress of Hell was absolutely true, so she did not know what could be added. Still, if every demon has a role, how do they make people unhappy? This was a rather complicated question that depended on the person himself. That is why he cannot give him any specific answer. Of course, such an imprecise question entailed an imprecise answer, and Vanel thought about the specifics and decided to ask Libelle what she thought about it. She always made fun of him and tried to make jokes every time she saw him. Sitting down on the couch opposite him, she smiled and said that such childish jokes did not make him unhappy. For the devil, this is a meaningless act that only amuses a person and hardly plays a big role. At that very moment, the protagonist realized why Sarilot was angry with her, but it didn't solve all the issues. There were still many things he wanted to discuss here and now.
Looking down, he asked what happens to a devil or demon who does not fulfill his role. There were many options that came to his mind, but instead of fantasizing, he chose to ask directly. She didn't want to talk much about her fate, so she smiled and hinted that maybe first an angry Sarah would beat the crap out of her, and then something would be decided. LaBelle's words changed his mind. After all, she was given one more chance to correct her behavior, and then she would be finally sentenced. In fact, he already had the solution to the problem of LaBelle's presence in his estate in his hands, but it was difficult to talk about it. For some reason, he wanted to save her from possible death. If he had thought about it a little longer, he might have given up on this idea, so he asked right now if her sentence would be changed if Fennel was hurt by her. Of course, demons don't want any physical injuries that would simply interfere with everyday life because their goal is to corrupt a person's moral and spiritual state. But why exactly does he want to be unhappy? She found it rather strange to hear Vanel say such things, and she said so. He had been avoiding her presence for a surprisingly long time, remembering all her jokes and hiding in the rooms of the mansion. So now it was becoming increasingly unclear why he had revived and so openly wanted to help her. Recalling all of the above, LaBelle immediately explained that he would be better off without her. From the moment she appeared in his house, his life went downhill. Our hero also understood this, but for some reason, after her words, a lump gathered in his throat that did not want to go anywhere. Unfortunately, it was the truth, which no one was going to dispute. She knew about his every move and thought, so it made little sense to say that she had misunderstood something. This calm expression on her face bothered him, because it seemed that she was wishing to end her life. It was true that he had long been searching for an effective method to expel her from the estate. As the next head of the Norton family, he felt responsible for his home and servants. Yet why did he continue to protect and worry about her fate? Had Vanel grown so attached to her in such a short period of time? And now all this was hurting him. Instead, LaBelle acted as if nothing had happened and sat calmly across from him. There was a silence between them that no one dared to break. However, time passed, and eventually she apologized for everything she had done or said that was unpleasant to him and got up from the couch. It was already late evening on earth, so everyone needed to go to their rooms and get some rest. As usual, she offered to walk him to his room, but she was not allowed to even reach the door. The protagonist immediately called her and asked her to wait. He jumped up and grabbed her hand, which surprised even himself. It had been a long time since they had met, but this was the first time he had taken the initiative and touched her. Unexpectedly, LaBelle staggered to her feet and fell. Vanel fell with her when he wanted to hug her, so now the two of them were sitting on the floor. It was dangerous, but she managed to make sure that neither of them got hurt. Of course, the first thing she did after she came to her senses was to ask if our hero was okay, because she was very worried about him. However, as soon as she heard that he answered, not all right, her heart skipped a beat and her brain came up with the worst possible scenario. He really didn't understand what was happening, but he felt that he was in incredible trouble. From the moment she appeared at the mansion, Vanel never felt quite right. Libelle is a dangerous demon, and he would really be better off without her. However, she had promised to go stargazing soon, so without a fulfilled promise, he refused to let her go so easily. Of course, he couldn't say outright that he didn't want to break up, but it didn't matter because she understood. His warm words made LaBelle feel better, so she gave him a gentle kiss on the forehead as a thank you. This small action instantly made his head turn red in the place of the kiss, and his embarrassing thoughts disappeared. He did not expect her to hug him back, so almost immediately he began to resist again, forgetting that he had started it all. She was really grateful that he was worried about her and remembered the stars. It was the first time in a long time that someone cared about her, so she couldn't let it go unnoticed. Finally, there was someone who saw her as a person, not a demon. LaBelle almost immediately apologized for saying something so confusing, but it doesn't matter now. Even though the protagonist couldn't see her face, it sounded like she might be crying. He was probably the first person to see a demon cry. He patted her gently on the back until she stirred. He hardly ever communicated with his peers and didn't know how to calm someone down, so he relied on his intuition and simply asked her not to worry about it too much. After that, she kissed him again on the temple and pulled away. She enjoyed watching Vanel blush every time, but today was special because she wasn't doing it for fun. She was truly grateful for everything he had said earlier. Rising from the floor, she held out her hand and invited him to come up. He agreed, although he was still embarrassed. Rubbing his temple, he didn't understand what had come over her, but he was glad to see that she was okay. The way she was smiling sincerely reassured him. 
It seemed she had a plan to solve the problems that could have threatened her life. Now she began to look like the usual Libelle who had been haunting him every day. After this heart-to-heart -heart talk, she finally had the courage to go to Sarah and tell him about her decision, which she was not going to change. The little flame that burned brightly was darting from side to side, not realizing what was happening. He did not know what he had done wrong, because he believed that all his actions were full of good. He was sure that he had made a huge mistake, and that was why he was in hell. He did not want to believe in such a fate, so he asked to reconsider the decision, but the devil sitting opposite him thought differently. Sarah who had been diligently doing her job, now sat in front of him and listened to his complaints, but she immediately realized that this soul was just talking nonsense and blaming others. Because of his deceitful nature, she passed the harshest sentence on him. She spent all her free time in hell because her role was to judge souls who had spent their lives in sin. She was the one who had the right to punish them according to the deeds they had committed during their sinful lives. Many sinful souls passed through her, so sometimes she had to fight with them. There were times when they planned to escape, and she had to chase them, but these were the little things in life. But it was not only sinful souls that appeared before her. Her duties also included judging her demon friends and colleagues, whom she had no right to show pity for. With such a life, she was forced to lock her emotions deep inside and pass judgment truthfully. She had nothing to think about or feel sorry for. The only thing she knew for sure was how to deal with souls. There was no such thing as her showing pity for them, so it was a futile exercise to doubt her work. She was true and ruthless evil, and that was her role. Sarah Lott was the only one who had the power over someone else's life in hell, which is why most demons would have preferred to never have been born. One day she came to her workplace and began to listen to people's cries one by one. At first it was hard to get used to, but every year it became easier for her. Everything repeated itself like a cursed groundhog day. Every person who came to her court immediately began to press for pity and tell her about their poor life and how unfair it was. They were ready to do anything to be acquitted and sent to paradise, but this was no longer possible. They were not sent to hell in vain, because there had never been a mistake. These souls were sent here because of their bad characters, shameful deeds, and atrocities, so it only needed to determine the severity of the punishment. Moreover, most of them were of human origin, and their essence had long been studied. Sarah Lott was used to them. Each time she listened patiently to their story, but nothing changed. All of them had dirty souls that thought only of themselves and never of others. Many greedy people passed through her court, who even after death found excuses for their actions to survive. All this was very disgusting to her, so somewhere along the way she began to look down on all of them. When they began to lie in court, it became even easier to pass a sentence and Sarah Lott was even more comfortable. This behavior of the souls made her job much easier. Until one day. Flying through the sky in the world of humans, she stopped at the Nakuru Cathedral, which was the largest of all the cathedrals in Istarica. She hovered over it just as there was a church service and wondered who was leading the service. The cathedral was run by a priest named Coentil, who had powerful spiritual powers that helped many people. Therefore, it is unnecessary to talk about the scale of the threat he posed even to the strongest devil. It was not surprising that none of the lower-class demons could even get close to him. However, they did not understand what their problem was and kept coming to Sarah to complain about it. Finally, she got fed up with all the complaints and went to the human world herself to deal with him personally. However, as you might guess, she didn't know what to do in this situation either. The people in the church were enough to break their faith, making them doubt the priest's abilities. However, it was not clear how to do it. Contacting the Kohenenthal family and breaking into their home seemed the only reasonable solution to succeed. Destroying them from the inside was what she wanted to achieve in record time. Observing the people from the sky, Sarah Lott compared them to insects, which were easy to crush. But she should not have deviated from the plan, which was becoming more and more complicated every time. It seems that the priest's family had two children, thanks to whom she wanted to destroy the entire church. That's how she ended up in their house at one point. For some reason then, Priest Cohenenthal did not feel threatened by her and was sincerely happy to see her. He was happy that she had appeared before him, and then he prayed to God for a long time, thanking him for the fulfillment of his request. To achieve this result, she even changed into a modest plain dress, hoping to be charmed and hired. The priest had been looking for a tutor for his child for quite some time, so Sarah Lott was like manna from heaven for him. Of course, as a polite person, she thanked him for his compliments, but asked him to get down to business and not waste his precious time. He immediately realized that he had hired a workaholic, so he quickly called for a maid to give her a tour. 
Fortunately, she was quite good at playing her part and entered the enemy's house without being noticed. Upon reaching the boy's room, the maid opened the door for her, but as soon as they entered, they did not see anyone. For a boy, the room seemed surprisingly clean, so he could not hide in it. Apologizing for his behavior in advance, the maid asked Sarah-Lot to stay here until she found him. She had no choice, so she just walked around the room. She didn't want to have much trouble, so when she realized that she would be dealing with a restless child, she was a little upset. And now she had another unwanted problem. Going to the window, she looked around the area in search of escape routes and guards. Still, the day will come when she will destroy the priest and everyone connected with him. That's why everything should be done as quickly as possible, without paying much attention to the local people. It seems that Sarah-Lot would have thought about this for a long time, but her thoughts were distracted when someone pulled on her dress, drawing attention to her. It turned out to be a little girl who was looking at her intently for some reason. At the time, she didn't know who the child was or how she had managed to sneak up on her unnoticed. However, this was not the main question that stuck in her mind. The girl's hair was completely disheveled and contained many green blades of grass, which made the question of where she was wandering ask for itself. Only this child could have become a trump card for her, which would have been great to use in case of an emergency. She changed her mind about asking the question and remembered the girl's name. Marsha Cohenenthal was the eldest daughter in her family and the one the devil herself wanted to use. Her eyes expressed a sincere curiosity that she did not even hide. Her sweet appearance was immediately enchanting, so as soon as her sonorous voice was heard, Sarah-Lot immediately came to her senses. Bending down to her, she learned that Marsha had been playing hide-and-seek with her brother, but now she couldn't find him. He wasn't in the house, so she went outside and put some grass in her hair. Previously, he always hid somewhere higher, such as at the top of a tree or in its crown, but today he was not there, so she had to ask the elders for help. When Sarah-Lot heard her story, she was very surprised, because such hiding places are very dangerous for young children. It was even strange that no one accompanied them or supervised them. Unlike her brother, Marcia seemed to be a slightly different child, much smarter and calmer. That is why Sarah-Lot began to play along and praise her for a job well done in finding her brother. However, she did not even realize that her words would be taken to heart, and she would be invited to play together. Sarah-Lot just wanted to avoid attracting attention, so to calm the child down, she told her a couple of banal sentences of refusal. Marcia, on the other hand, had a picture of them playing, running and jumping together, so just by looking at her expression, it was clear that she would not accept no. Her eyes shone with a desire to hear yes, but Sarah Lot herself was not satisfied with that. She didn't have time to do such nonsense with this child, as it seemed like a ridiculous idea to use her powers in this way. However, she still needed to get close to her and start using her powers for her own purposes. Well, she was willing to do anything to successfully complete her plan. It would be nice to get to know her better, so crouching down so that she was at Marcia's eye level, she stroked her cheek and smiled, giving her consent to the fun. After she introduced herself to Marcia, her face lit up and she grabbed Sarah Lott's hand and smiled. If before she had been happy only with her eyes, the appearance of a smile on her face was so mesmerizing that one could not look away. She looked like a sincere child who was glowing with happiness. It was the first time Sarah Lott had ever seen this. At work, she was surrounded only by greedy and deceitful souls, so such a sincere soul surprised her greatly, which made her even freeze in place. However, Marcia did not sit still and made every effort to raise her to her feet and lead her, because the search for her brother was urgent. She was surprising the mistress of hell more and more with her antics, but they were only to her advantage. She was cheerfully led along, telling the story of the house. But most of all, she heard about Marcia's favorite things, so Sarah Lott tried to memorize everything in detail. After all, children are the best way to learn information. However, that was the case before. Standing in front of the teenager now, she realized that even more than a couple of years had passed since they had met. Watching her, she realized that she could not use Marcia to achieve her goals. As much as she didn't want to admit it, she was worried about her and genuinely cared about her, accompanying her everywhere. Sarah Lott didn't understand why these nostalgic memories were coming back to her right now, because five minutes ago she was wondering what LaBelle would say to her and whether she would take her last chance. Taking the shell Marcia had given her a couple of minutes ago out of her pocket, she thought that perhaps this was the reason for their appearance in this world. There could be no other explanation. Perhaps over time she had become too attached to this child, but she could not make such a mistake. Sarah Lott was the devil who decided the fate of sinners, so she did not want to believe in her soft heart. 
It would have been utter foolishness, because who knows what would have happened after she returned to hell. Just a couple of words spoken by Marcia made her shudder and come to her senses, and the small shell she received as a gift from a human child made her think about the meaning of her existence. Meanwhile, LaBelle was already on her way to a meeting with Sarah-Lot, whom she had called to talk without Marcia. They went to another wing of the mansion and stopped where almost no one was passing, because she wanted to announce her final answer as soon as possible and not have it heard by unauthorized ears. Sarah-Lot valued her time, so as soon as they were alone, she asked about her decision. She hadn't given her a specific time to think about it, so she was a little surprised when LaBelle came to her so quickly. She was looking forward to this moment, hoping that she would not have to judge her colleague. However, with each passing minute, her heart was beating faster and faster, wanting to hear the long-awaited words. Of course, everyone knew what would happen after LaBelle's answer, so it was a bit difficult for her to talk about her decision. It seemed as if her voice had disappeared and her tongue did not turn to say it, but the decision was made. She inhaled more air and gathered her strength and said that she was not going to make Vanel unhappy. She officially swore that she would serve him to the end and would never harm the Norton family. Well, the answer was received, after which Sarah Lott smiled and asked her if this meant that she was giving up her role as a demon. However, she repeated her earlier words with her head held high. Libelle had thought about her decision long enough and was not going to change it. However, this behavior of the demon was outrageous. She is a creature of hell, but she flatly refuses to fulfill her duties, which almost all demons had to do. Sarah Lott, according to the procedural code, listened to her and had to pass a sentence equal to the crime. So, if that was her will, she would now take care of making Vanel miserable instead. This was not part of Lubel's plans, because she did not understand how he was involved in her own disobedience. Not knowing what was happening, our hero looked around and wherever he looked, there was flames everywhere around him. He was forcibly transferred from a cozy room to a hell filled with the stench of smoke. LaBelle couldn't believe that Sarah Lott was using such disgusting methods to force her to do what a demon should do, but she couldn't let herself do anything. When she saw Sarah Lott reaching out to him, she asked him to run as far away as possible to protect herself from danger. Such disobedience was shameful even for demons, so LaBelle stopped helplessly, unable to help him in any way. Any move she made could only make Vanel worse, so the only thing she could do was grit her teeth. Taking the protagonist hostage, Sarah Lott used her abilities and pulled out her weapon, bringing the sharp end of the blade close to his face. She had seen LaBelle worried about his life, so she took this chance. Now she expected what LaBelle had said earlier to turn into the opposite. There was only one question left. What would she choose in the end?